For an entire year, one play has permeated the landscape of college football. Second and 26. Second and 26. Second and 26. It doesn't get much bigger than that. Now Alabama looking uphill at second and 26. Here's Tua stepping back. Loads up. Looks long. Throws. End zone. Touchdown. Down. Alabama. Devontae Smith. Oh. Man, uh, I just can't remember this kind of shock feeling. As the champion of college football, how about that? Today, the Tide and Dogs are back again in Atlanta. Their shared past makes the present much more than a game to decide the SEC title. For the victory and the vanquished. That second and 26 is now a second chance to burnish a majestic legacy or rewrite a haunted history. is Georgia for the championship of the SEC. You can feel it in the air of Mercedes-Benz Stadium in Atlanta. It's the SEC championship on CBS presented by Dr. Pepper. Our matchup, the number one team in the country, the Crimson Tide of Alabama, the fourth ranked Bulldogs of Georgia in front of 73 fans in Atlanta. And we welcome you, everybody. I'm Brad Nessler. It's not often you get a matchup like this. We've got the defending SEC champions and national runner-up, Georgia Bulldogs. And we've got the defending national champion, Crimson Tide of Alabama. And it is round two, that famous play from 11 months ago. And it's a memory that the Georgia fans would love to forget. It's something the Alabama fans will never forget. And as I bring in my partner, Gary Danielson, partner, they say you don't get second chances in life that often. And ever since January 8th, that one play has been stuffed down the Georgia team and their fans' throats since that night. You think they're the kind of team that can make up for it? I do. All year I've been saying there's only three or four teams in all of college football that can match up with Alabama, and I believe Georgia can because Kirby Smart has built this Georgia team to be Alabama and beat Alabama. He has enough talent. He's going to have to play a great game to do it, though. We've seen these guys four times for Georgia, five times for Alabama already this year. Now I'm just going to say Tua Tagovailoa became a household name in that game and that play that we talked about. It's kind of a hard name for some people in some <laughs> households. But if I just said to you, give me one word if I said Tua. I think that's easy. Envious. <laughs> I played the position. What he's doing, only a few people in the world can do the way he throws it. But there's another reason. The talent around him. I'm envious of that talent. They are loaded on offense. Okay, if I said give me one word for Jake Fromm. I think mislabeled. How so? He's been called a game manager. He's way more than that. He might have been that a year ago, but now he's a weapon for this team on Georgia, and he will have to be here today. We'd be hard-pressed to find two better sophomore quarterbacks on the same field than these two dudes. They're both playing the same, and Ness, I really believe that neither team would trade their guy for the other guy. Both fit. Fromm runs that offense the running game and the passing game, and Tua will throw that ball anywhere on the field with all the talent. A perfect fit for both quarterbacks. Two great offenses, but you don't get to 12-0 and 11-1 without playing defense, and we got some pretty good defenders in this one. We do. The great defense of the SEC is represented tonight, and these two guys all year, when you turn on the tape, this Alabama defense is led by Quinnen. 
If you don't stop him, you do not have an offense all night. And last year in the national championship, nobody played better than DeAndre Baker. He is a star, maybe the best corner in all of college football. He has to shut down one side of the field for Georgia in this football game. A lot of weapons, but he has to take care of his guy. Back in the SEC meetings in the middle of July, you and I looked at each other and said, Alabama-Georgia would be a pretty good game in this one. We got them. And they are. You got them. Nick Saban aiming for another national championship, but right now thinking about an SEC title. And in rolls the number one tide. to Jamie Erdahl with Coach Saban. Coach, you know your team better than anyone else. What is in the DNA of this group that tells you that you're ready for this stage in this game? Well, you know, you can do extraordinary things when everybody's committed to the same thing. You've got the toughness, discipline, play physical for 60 minutes in the game. So, you know, it's all about wanting to be denied what you came here to get. They've earned the opportunity, and we're thankful for that, but we got to try to finish tonight. Thank you, Coach. Thank you. In bark the Bulldogs. And across the field, back down to Jamie. Coach, 11 months ago, you were standing on this sideline. What emotions are surging through you and your team right now? Well, I'm not thinking about 11 months ago. <laughs> I'm thinking about this team, what these seniors have meant for this program, and want them to play their best game. You only had one half to defend to a Tungo Vailoa in January. What have you prepared for after seeing him for an entire season? Well, he's really talented. They've got a lot of weapons for him. We've got to play a good game defensively. We've got to change things up. Coach, thank you. Thank you. The coin toss down to an SEC legend who was honored with the Mike Slab Award last night. Archie Manning, they'll toss it. We'll kick it when we come back. Welcome to Atlanta. Today, it's the Tide and the Dogs for the championship of the SEC. Let's go! SEC Championship game on CBS, presented by Dr. Pepper. That it is, Jason, and thanks for a season of getting us warmed up and fired up every Saturday. Don't have to ask the fans that right now. Alabama won the toss and deferred. Joseph Bullibus has got it teed up. Nicole Hardman and Brian Harrigan are back deep for Georgia. 27th SEC championship game. Alabama's been here 12 times. That's more than anyone. Georgia won it a year ago over Auburn. Now they get a crack at the number one team in the country. And they'll start from the 25-yard line. And that means Jake Fromm, the sophomore out of Houston County High School in Warner Robins, Georgia. And he has had a sensational season and 23 and 3 as a starter. Being interested to see how Georgia starts in the national championship game. They opened up the game with seven consecutive passes. How will they do it tonight? The Andre Swift to the backfield with Fromm. Three receivers down to the bottom. Isaac Nauta joins them in a slot, so everybody set to the left. First snap of the game. And it's DeAndre Swift off the right side for two, maybe three, before he's swarmed under by the Alabama defense. The Dr. Pepper starting lineups joining Jake Fromm for Georgia. There's how they look. 
And I think that guy's going to be important today. Lamont Gilliard is the center for the Dogs, making his 41st start. And he's lined up against Quill Williams, number 92, who Gary's already talked about being a game wrecker. There they are. Second out of eight. Swift again. Not much. And the ball almost came out at the end. It'll be third down against the Alabama defense. That looks like this. A group that's getting better every week. And Dylan Moses is a finalist for the Buckus Award in his linebacker spot. Georgia's a 50% team on third down. And their opening series has a third and six. Remember, because of targeting him a week ago, Jared Maiden, a normal starter in the secondary, is not in there. He's out for the first half. Keaton Anderson is in the game, number 31. From the 29, that's Godwin in motion. Franz's first pass is not going to be a pass. It's going to be a sack, and it's Quentin Williams. Maybe the biggest question mark in the game. Trey Hill, a true freshman, is in at right guard, and Quinnen Williams shows him why he is going to be tough to handle. Because of injuries at right guard, it was a worrisome spot, and it was exploited on the first pass of the game. A loss of 11 on the sack, and so Jake Camarda, the freshman putter, is inside his own five to kick. The greatest punt's going to be fielded at the 35 by Jalen Waddle. Waddle got the edge. He's at midfield. Waddle all the way down to the 29-yard line. Last year, it was Miko Hartman making the plays in the punt game. But Jaden Waddle has not had the opportunity until now. And you show he's got Hartman's speed. And what a play on not getting a clip that time by Josh Jacobs. Put his hands up in the air and just shielded the last guy so there was no doubt the call could be made against him. 36-yard punt return for Waddle. And what a way to set up shop for Tua Tagovailoa and the offense of Alabama at the dog 29. Tua's first throw is on the mark. Going to be close to a first down to Devontae Smith. Tua Tagovailoa, probably the front runner for the Heisman Trophy, and why not? The numbers staggering. 12 and 0 record as a starter. He comes in with 36 touchdown passes, just two interceptions, and so far one for one today. Alabama already in the red zone. Damian Harris straight up the middle and taking Bulldogs with him inside the 10 still going down around the six. I better set the Dr. Pepper starting lineups for Alabama in a hurry for you. <laughs> and the guy that just carried a whole pack of dogs with him Damian Harris the leading rusher for Alabama had it down to the six yard line. talent returning but not right up the middle of that defense losing Roquan Smith who was a demon in this game was a question mark as well first and goal Alabama Damian Harris the fake the throw is broken up in the end zone nice play in the secondary by Eric Stokes it was not a good throw he was not led and Stokes made up the ground if Tua would have made a good throw here, an A throw would have been a touchdown. Watch, just throw behind enough for Stokes to get his hand out there and make the deflection. Stokes was the midseason change for Tyson Campbell, and he made the play right there. Second and goal. Opening series for Alabama. If you're just joining us, Georgia was a three and out, then a great punt return by Jalen Waddle, and it's second and goal, Alabama. Judy in motion, the spin move by Tagovailoa, now pressured, and down it goes. DeAndre Walker and Jawan Taylor with a sack. 
Well, this is the play that almost cost Tua in the national championship, trying to make too much out of a play. On second down, if it's not there, throw it away. And by the way, keep an eye on Tua because I think he tweaked that right knee on this sack. He came up limping on the play. Remember, last week is the first time he didn't have a brace on that knee. Loss of 11, much like Fromm's was for Georgia. Yes. Third and goal, but way back at the 18-yard line now. Tagovailoa scans the field, fires to the end zone. It's intercepted. Richard LeCount for Georgia, going the other way. LeCount got a convoy. What a turnaround. Georgia with the interception. And Tua is limping off. What a bait by LeCount. He baited Tua all the way and forced him. Watch him turn this way and then come back after the play. He turns and then comes back. What a play. After the interception, illegal block in the back on the return team, number 44. That's a 10-yard penalty. First down, Georgia. That takes away some of the return, but nonetheless, and now two is going in the tent. This has been the question mark about Tua all year. Does he try to do too much? He waves the ball around. He takes negative plays. He makes a lot of big ones out of that, but you see him tap his shoulder. His fault, but he came up limping. Juwan Taylor, number 44 right there, an unnecessary block behind the play. Too eager, unnecessary, cost his team. And at that point, LeCount was already down, almost down. But when you're making a block behind the back, when you're five yards behind the play, bad play. We don't normally show main shots of a tent on the sideline, yes. but it's because the starting quarterback is in it to a Tagovailoa. Either his knee or his ankle or possibly both as we looked at a replay on the sack and the interception. Well, let's see if they turn loose, Jake Fromm. Elijah Holyfield with him this time in the backfield. And Elijah will get the first carry for him today. And a pretty good one. Picked up about five. Quentin Williams in on the bottom of the pile. Here's another look. Now, see that left ankle? Yeah, it was. It was his left ankle. And it was his right knee that was injured before, and now it's his left ankle. That would put Jalen Hurts on the hot seat if Tua can't come back. We certainly hope he can. Second down at five. Charlie Warner, the tight end, switches sides. And now a sweep but a whistle before Jason Stanley can get going. So just to kind of recap the start last start. year. Offense, number 66, five-yard penalty. Second down. One reason that Georgia may not want to be throwing it too much. When Fromm started out with seven consecutive passes last year, he was three for seven for 12 yards in an interception. Right. Maybe they want to get him calmed down. He did calm down pretty well. Ended he up 50% for 232 and a touchdown, but those two interceptions as well a year ago. So second down of 10 after the penalty. Holyfield delayed handoff does what he does is run over would-be tacklers Deontay Thompson did get him down though this is the two-headed monster for Georgia DeAndre Swift who's swift and fast and shifty and Elijah Holyfield would just soon run you over yeah, they had as 12 well men. Alabama had 12 men and they're gonna get called for it I don't know if Nick Saban got the timeout in time the back judge called the penalty, but I don't know if Nick Saban got there in time. There you see Raquan Davis yeah. trying to run off. He's not going to get anywhere no. near to the sideline. First charge timeout, Alabama. He did. Yep. So no penalty, but a timeout taken from the tide. This SEC Championship Diamond Moment is presented by Jared the Galleria of Jewelry.
In 2012, Georgia's Todd Gurley ran it in from 10 yards out to give the Bulldogs a three-point lead in the fourth. But just over three minutes left, A.J. McCarron found Amari Cooper for a 45-yard touchdown. On the final drive, Aaron Murray completed a pass to Chris Conley inbounds, and the clock ran out on Georgia. Alabama won their second SEC title under Nick Saban. To Atlanta scoreless here in the first quarter. Tua Tungavailoa went into the tent after that opening drive for Alabama's offense. He has emerged. That knee brace is not on. When we saw him in the tent, he was coming up and down on his toes like this, telling me that it is that ankle. It looks like the left ankle has been taped, but he is back in the offensive meeting room. All right, Jamie, thanks. Only his fifth career interception, that by Richard LeCount a few minutes ago. Georgia, meanwhile, after the Alabama timeout, third down and five. And a jump. Might be a free play. Fromm's going to throw it, and it's complete. And it's a first down. J.J. Holloman. Well, two great things happened for Georgia right there. They got a free play, and they also established the back shoulder throw against the bump and run coverage of Alabama. You must attack their corners. If you let them dictate the game by not throwing at their bump and run coverage, they'll kill you. Great catch by Holloman to pick up a 19, and that'll put a little confidence in number 11. Justin Fields in. After the from completion. So we see the heralded freshman here in the first quarter. He gives it off to Andre Swift. Three or four for Swift. And I think that early message to Alabama is be ready in your game plan. So when you're on the sideline over there, now they're going to have to go over. All right, field's a player. Let's go over all our alerts when he comes in the game. Right. So George has worked it out to the 47, second down and six. Here's that unbalanced formation that they started the game with, only going the other direction. All four to the right side this time. Shifting Alabama defensive front. Fromm's got plenty of time, throws the out complete. Ridley, little hop, step, jump, and first down. See, that's what I'm talking about, Jake. Everybody just talks about him being a game manager, get us in the right play, throw to the right guy, but he throws this flat-footed clear across the field right over a, a defender right here. Watch, down, 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 zips it to the outside, right over the safety in the play. That's not an easy throw, and he's doing it now. He's got that type of confidence in his arm. Georgia in Alabama territory for the first time today at the 45. DeAndre Swift stood up. After a yard pickup, <laughs> number 92 is there again. Well, if you're Jim Chaney, offensive coordinator for Georgia, longtime SEC coach, been just about everywhere in college football, you know right now you're looking out there and going, well, we're not blocking them very well. I'm trying to find a running play that we can block those big guys, those big guys in white, and so far they've not been able to knock Alabama off the line of scrimmage. All their runs have been inside the tackle so far. See if they try to get one wide. Holyfield in the backfield now. It's second and nine, but it's from to throw. Pumps once, throws sideline in and out of the hands of Riley Ridley. Probably should have caught it as we check in with Jamie. Well, here's official word from Alabama. Tua has an undisclosed injury that is not his knee that he was dealing with earlier, and he is good to return to the game. But from what I can see, it is that left ankle. And, and we could too, we could see that it was just under the tent during the commercial break that it was his ankle, right? Yeah. Just enough. As Jamie said, he was up on his tiptoes, moving that ankle. So here we go. Here we go. With third and long again. At the 44. Holloman and Hardman to the left of Fromm. He's looking that way. He's throwing that way. And in and out of the hands of Holloman. What nice play. defensive play by Shaheen Carter. You got it. And that's exactly the way he's taught. We talked to Nick Saban yesterday about the back shoulder throw, and he says the trick is not to look back, but to look at the hands when the receiver goes up and catches. Carter peeks back, but he still plays through the hands of the receivers and makes the defensive play. Well, at least the interception for Georgia has switched the field, and now Jake Camarda would like to keep it out of that guy's hands. He didn't the first time. This time he will, and where will it be down? 
No, Georgia can't quite get there. Yeah, they should have caught that one. It was catchable, and they could not find it, what, under the lights or the TVs or whatever it is above them. <laughs> the roof's closed. We know that part. Two and company back in offense when we come back. Light straight without the noise. Dream CBS Sports HQ. The all-new 24-7 Sports News Network available on your phone, computer, and connected TV devices. CBS Sports HQ, sports for the true fans. Gary's on there after every one of our games, including today. Back on the field with the Alabama offense, and Tua Tagovailoa is part of it. So that's good news for Alabama and their fans. And he's still hopping up and down, as Jamie told you, trying to get that ankle warmed up. Let's see if Alabama doesn't try to start their rock wide running game that they use so effectively in big games. Last year, Roquan Smith ran those plays down. Let's see if they test the linebacker play from Georgia with some wide sweeps. Here comes Judy in motion. Tagovailoa looks right, looks left across the middle, and incomplete intended for Waddle. And, and Georgia defensively, down. excuse me, Gary, I got to set him. the Georgia yep. defense. Dr. Pepper, Georgia defense looks like this. Richard LeCount, his first interception of the season was on that previous series. He's their leading tackler as well. How about that? That's a team that's last in the SEC and, and sacks have a sack and a knockdown already. Not bad, huh? Yep. Two is only one out of four for nine yards so far early. Irv Smith in motion on second and ten. Damian Harris will try to test going wide and it didn't go anywhere. Courtesy DeAndre Walker who's having a big first quarter here. Well six key defenders are back from a year ago and DeAndre Walker is one of them. He shared time at the outside linebacker but he is one of their stalwarts now. He leads the team in tackles for loss and sacks. Now it's third down and long for Alabama. They're third in the country in third down conversions. From the 21. Tagovailoa in trouble again. Lofts it wide open and drops. You don't see that happen very often. Irv Smith had to put the brakes on on an underthrown ball and couldn't handle it. Just before he catches it, he glances to his right to see where the safety is coming. Right down the middle, but he looks over to his right. Watch him just peek just before he catches it. And just then, he takes his eye off the ball. So Alabama the punt. Mike Bernier to kick. Miko Hardman waits on the other end for Georgia. And he's a good return man if you give him a chance. This one will not though. Fair catch around the 40 yard line. So neither team being able to crack the scoreboard so far. Two off to a slow start. Countdown clock to the Super Bowl. 64 days from now. Jim and Tony will be sitting where Gary and I are. Tracy will be where Jamie is. And we'll bring you Super Bowl 53. Tua Tagovailoa has gone back in the tents. Jalen Hurts standing by. That's his numbers from last year, and that's the reason Nick Saban made the change to Tua at halftime. Georgia first down. Their third possession now at the 40 yard line. From quick throw, got his man, Holloman. Back into Alabama territory at the 42. Well, remember, the one-time commit to Alabama was Jake Fromm. He decommitted, de went with Kirby to Georgia, and you can see he is the real deal. You watch him on tape over and over this year, and the way he string flings that ball, he's an elite thrower. He had a 19-yarder to Holloman earlier, 18 more yards that time, and the dogs have it at the tied 42. Empty backfield. From the throw again. Again down the middle. Out of crossing route is Terry Godwin. And Godwin probably gave up a first down by giving a little ground there. Well, he had a great matchup. Anthony Jennings, the outside linebackers, matched up on a wide receiver. You see how easily Godwin beats, gets inside Jennings. Jennings is a good pass rusher, but in space against number five, that's a gimme. 
Eric probably had a first down, but that little skip to try to get it outside cost him a yard, so it's second down and one. Yeah, second and two, though, a lot of things you can do. Will they try to run it and think they haven't been able to block him? DeAndre Swift, the cutback. Can he get to the edge? The stiff arm got him the first down. Stiff arm into the face of Dylan Moses, or he would not have picked up the first. Yeah, and Moses can fly, so you know how fast DeAndre must be to get away from Moses. Well, that was McKinney at first that had a shot at him, number 15. And then Moses at the end. Well, this is Georgia's deepest penetration, the 31 yard line. It's the Power Five teams this year. After that groin injury healed up, he has really been coming on strong. Here's the formation du jour, this un unbalanced right again. This time the play fake, and Fong going deep to the end zone. In and out of the hands of Nicole Hardman. He had it, bobbled it, and couldn't hold it. Oh, wow. Well, Miko Hartman, who had two touchdowns a year ago, the long bomb and the wildcat, this was a perfect throw and could have been caught. Sertan had nothing to do but hope it was dropped. And it was. That unbalanced line that Jim Cheney has showed Alabama paid off. Out of the tent for the second or third time already here in the first quarter. Meanwhile, the Georgia offense second down and ten. Showing blitz. Showing blitz right there. They come up the middle. Fromm gets it away before they get to him, and he throws a strike to Ridley for a first down. You know, Ness, I've done so many Alabama games, and if you shy away from their bump and run coverage to the outside and do not attack it, they just close up the field. You have to go wide, and you have to make the tough throw and catch. And they've got two of them so far in this game. I don't think Fromm's had a bad throw yet. He's had a couple drops, but... He had that once. You no, know, he ended the game last year with a sack, and he started one yeah. with a sack here. The offensive line for Georgia seems to have settled down. Georgia right at the 20 yard line. And now from under center with Holyfield behind it. The give is to Elijah Holyfield and back to the line of scrimmage and that's all. LeBron Ray who's really been coming on for the Alabama defense in on the tackle. Everybody knows it's not easy sledding running the ball between the tackles against this uh, 34 defense for Alabama. That's why you have to continue to show them everything formations, play actions, jet sweeps, everything, or they'll bottle you up. The throw, not a touchdown. Strike from Donato. Yes, you said it previously. I don't think Jake Fromm has had a bad pass. Watch this one. You can't throw a ball better than this. Boom. Right in the face mask. Dylan Moses had no chance. Rodrigo Blankenship in for the point after, of which he's hit 147 in a row in his career. And that one's up and good as well. Isaac Nauta, third touchdown catch of the year. It caps a 60-yard drive and seven plays, a little over three minutes. And Georgia strikes first. Dogs over the tide, seven of it. Since mid-September at Ole Miss, that lasted all of 70 seconds before before they came back to score in that game. But right now, Georgia's got the early lead in the SEC championship game. A three-minute, eight-second drive. The touchdown came at the three-minute, eight-second mark of the first quarter. Black and chip to kick. And it will sail out of the back of the end zone. And now we're going to do Project Smarter, presented by the Home Depot. Well, nothing works, and you're not smart if you can't block them. The question mark of the offensive line, watch what they do on the touchdown pass. From left to right, 
Andrew Thomas, Solomon Kinley, Lamont Gilliard, Trey Hill, and Isaiah Wilson all stone them. You get five good blocks up front, they're mean to throw the ball. Seven play drive, G, and they never had a third down on that drive. Yeah, well, he is on fire right now. Jake Fromm is showing how to pitch and catch this football. Tua Tagovailoa completed his first pass for nine yards. He's 0 for his last four. He's going to keep it on the ground this time, and it's Josh Jacobs for about three. Atrez Patrick made the tackle. So they've already got more yards on this drive than they did on their last one. They had three plays and no yardage before having to give it up. And there's the numbers, and you normally think that that left side wouldn't look that way. Second down and seven. Jacobs behind Tua. He fakes it to him, has plenty of time, steps into a deep middle throw and got it complete. And it's Henry Ruggs to midfield. Yeah, the only problem with this play, Georgia makes the tackle, but DeAndre Baker is down. Plenty of time to throw. Ruggs goes to the middle field, reads zone, stops, and they get the completion. Watch DeAndre Baker make the tackle, but then he grabs the back of his hamstring. So two of the key players we talked about in the open. Tonga Valoa has been in the tent. DeAndre Maker might be heading that way too, and that would be a huge blow to the Georgia defense. Tyson Campbell has come in to take the spot of DeAndre Baker in the secondary for Georgia. And he's at the wide side of the field. Let's see if Alabama tests him. Up there to the top of your screen. And he's got Judy. It's running against him. Out in the flat, Irv Smith. And Campbell takes him out of bounds. I still think we're not seeing a the tool we usually see with the sweet feet. It looks to me like he's still favoring that left ankle. And you see as he lets it go, he's still very, very ginger with that left ankle. DeAndre Baker coming back in, so that's good news for Georgia's defense. Second and six, just outside the Georgia 45. Najee Harris, his first run straight up the middle, powering his way down inside the 30-yard line. Well, thinking back to the last year's national championship game, when the game was on the line, it was Najee Harris that was in the game. I asked Nick Saban about that yesterday, and he says, you know what? On this turf, I just believe the fast guys are faster. I think he was talking about that guy. Tagovailoa flags down, probably a holding call. There's a sack coming from Walker, though. Again, Tua, it is first down. You cannot get a touchdown on every drop back. I think it was Jonah Williams with the penalty. But Georgia will take the play in the I sack. I don't know. It might have been the face mat, a deep Georgia hand to the face before that. Personal foul, hands to the face. Defense, number 15, right half the distance. First down. Yeah, I think DeAndre Walker coming off the left edge of Tua, the right side of the Georgia defense, his hand went right to the face, right there, right to the face mask, and that's why Jonah Williams got off balance on it. That's a good call. There you got the good look of it right there. So that moves it all the way down to the 14-yard line. Well, last time down here, remember, Alabama went to the passing game. Let's see if they say more discipline and try to run the ball here. Both backs in there, Josh Jacobs and Najee Harris with Tua. Play action, roll out, throw, dropped by Judy on a crossing route. He might have had a touchdown had he been able to hold it. I'll tell you, I would never have guessed that Alabama would be making the simple plays look hard early in this game. They're making mental mistakes, two sacks by Tua, two drop balls. They are right now seem to be the more nervous team in this football game. Much like Irv Smith earlier, Gary, I yes. think he took his eye off it oh. just at the last second. Hard to believe. Second and ten. Here's Josh Jacobs on a little draw play. Jacobs heading to the goal. I think his knee was down. At the one. Yep. 
A 13 yard romp for number eight. Well, again, I wondered on first down if we wouldn't see this, the way they're running the ball, the power, knee goes down just about, what, a half yard short? Yes. Yep. First and goal. Under center, talking about Lola trying to sneak, didn't get there. Boy, that's a funny call with a guy with a bad knee yes. on one side and a bad ankle on the other side. That might have been a good call yesterday, but now I don't think that's a good call. And Georgia was ready for it, weren't they? Juwan Taylor kind of submarined in there, timed it beautifully, and it's second and goal from the same spot. Maybe a little bit closer. Yeah, then we're gonna get to second quarter and decide who's gonna get the ball on the next carry, and I bet it isn't two of them. Well, the fans on the other end are gonna dig it, because we're gonna go 99 and a half yards to the other end. End of the first quarter. Georgia, seven, Alabama, nothing. We'll return to Atlanta after this message. In a word, from your local station. We start the second quarter at Mercedes-Benz Stadium. Alabama just rolled everybody the first 10 games of the season and Nick Saban said to us sometimes you get mentally tired and I think that's happened to our team a little bit in the last couple of weeks but right now they open the second quarter knocking on the Georgia door at about the one foot line Jacobs the tailback in the eye gets the call and walks in touchdown Alabama. Well, they followed number 82, Irv Smith, and number 92, Quinn and William. Quinn and goes like, I'm going out for a pass. <laughs> Jalen Hurts with his reaction on the sideline. And Bullibus, extra point upcoming to tie things up. And Alabama fans know not to go get any, any, a drink now. They want to watch this to make sure. Yep, they do. <laughs> because he's missed five extra points, but not this one. A 75-yard drive and eight plays. Josh Jacobs, the guy that got him close. Josh Jacobs, the guy that got him in. 7-7 seven, seven in Atlanta. Long touchdown drive. Josh Jacobs caps it off with his eighth rushing touchdown of the year. And now Miko Hardman trots back to the Georgia goal line, awaiting the kickoff. And we take you all the way back to Bullivis teeing it up. Nick Saban having a chat with his quarterback on the sideline. I can guarantee you he said, Tua, on first down, you don't have to make a big play every time. The sack on first down again was the troublesome. This could be returnable for Nico Hartman from the five. Broke out. Got to about the 26 as we get an update. As Axby's update, sucks over in the end zone. Yeah, hey, Ness, conference championship game in the American Memphis all over undefeated number eight UCF. Darrell Henderson, 166 yards on his first six carries, three touchdowns to go with it, over 1,800 yards on the season, 31-14 right now. Of course, the Knights without star quarterback Mackenzie Milton as we go back over to you guys at the 50. We're only about 50 yards away from you. Georgia's got it back at the 25-yard line. Jake Fromm has been spectacular through the first 15 minutes of this game. He's all by himself in the backfield. A quick throw out in the flat, complete to Brooks. And the freshman running back goes for about nine. We welcome you back into the booth. Brad and Gary, Jamie on the sideline. Alabama's made some mistakes, but hey, they're tied up. Yeah, I, I think if Georgia looks at this game and they say, listen, one touchdown per quarter, we'll take that. Yeah, they right. knew going in, they'd have to get into 30s to win this game. And I think, okay, we're doing what we need to do. And so far, even. Game even. Game was even at the end of regulation the last time they got together. Second down and three. DeAndre Swift behind from it. It's a sweep to Tyler Simmons, and he stopped short of the first down by Deontay Thompson. Good tackle by Thompson. Well, Thompson and McKinney, those two 14 and 15, come up with an intention of making the play every time they throw their bodies at the tackle. Remember when Deontay talked to us about starting in the national championship game last year? Was he nervous the night before? He said, yeah, I had to get up and throw up a few exactly. times. <laughs> Cootie Jones was injured for that game, and he stepped up and played admirably. Third and one. Georgia didn't have a third down on their last drive. 
This time they have one, and it's short yardage. Interesting. Third and no holding field on this play. Third and short. Swift got it. And about seven more. Holy, holy field, the thunder. Swift, the game breaker. I think it was the LSU game as Justin Fields is coming on the field right now. And sooner or later, we're going to see Justin Fields show that he can throw the ball, too. He's got a first down to work with this time. Number one recruit in the country, five star quarterback, playing behind Jake Fromm. Jake's a pretty good player to beat out. Yep. He's got two tight ends in there with him, Nauta and Charlie Warner. And he is going to throw for the first time. Maybe. Nope. Now he'll run. And he's going to be dragged down from Quentin Williams from behind. How good is that guy? Yeah. You know, if you're Lamont Gilliard, 53, the center, help trying to help out on the nose tackle. You know, last year he had Deron Payne, and he goes, oh, right. Deron Payne's gone the NFL. Who they got this year? Oh, uh oh, no. uh oh. <laughs> Where do they get these guys? Yeah. Thought I'd have a breather. Nope. You got another one. Three receivers to Fromm's left. Out of second and eight. And now Harry in motion out of the backfield. The throw is low, but Warner makes the catch. Yeah, what a catch. Great catch. Short of the first down. Charlie didn't get to play last year. He had a broken foot in the win over Oklahoma. Never got a chance to play in the national championship. Here he's got a catch. Midfield. Third down and two. And it's Brian Herring in the backfield with From. And again on short yardage, no Holyfield. From looks left all the way, just flips it out to Warner, and he's got a first down. So back to back catches. By the junior. And this is why the Georgia coaching staff loves Jake Fromm. Prior to the snap, he has done his homework so much, he knew where he was going with that football and delivers a first down for the offense. That's how he got labeled, and, and rightly so. As a freshman, they had a risk adverse offense last year. And, right. and why not? Okay. Yeah, but so this Michelle year, and Nick you, you got it. This year it's different. He, as I said in the open, he now is a weapon in the offense, not just a game manager. Again, both tight ends out there, both split out as wide receivers. But the gives to DeAndre Swift, little hesitation. Matt Wilson trying to get him down, finally gets him stopped at the 39 yard line. So there's a lot of ways of looking at it if you're Georgia. You want to keep that high-powered Alabama offense off the field. You'd love to make first down, first down, give me a 12-play drive, field goal, touchdown. But you also, in the back of your mind, you're knowing we have to score. I mean, there it's going to be tough sledding for our defense. So every time you get it, you say, we don't just want to control the clock. We need to put points on the board. Georgia's almost doubled Alabama in total yardage so far. Second down and six. Had to throw it in a hurry. Got it out to Nauta, but he's all wrapped up. Got back to the line of scrimmage. That's about it. Xavier McKinney is the guy that brought him down. Christian Miller was the guy that got in Jake Fromm's face and had to get rid of the ball in a hurry. Yes, yeah, called throwing hot. The outside linebacker was not blocked. And the quarterback and the receiver both have to adjust to the rushing outside linebacker. Well defended by Alabama that time. They picked up a couple of third downs on this drive, but this is their longest one. Third and seven. Remember the last drive, Quinton Williams was not in on the touchdown drive. He's in there right now on third down. And Holyfield's in the backfield for Georgia. From throws, caught Godwin, and he crawls his way to the 29-yard line. Again, the offensive line for Georgia's doing their job. Allowing the quarterback to step up and make the throw on third down. It was worrisome. They kept Holyfield in the backfield, but really he was able to release because there's nobody to help on. Gilliard up front does a nice job and a nice place to throw and step into the throw for Jake Fromm. Godwin with the dog crawl to the 29, where it's first down at the nine and a half minute mark of the quarter. Blitz is coming. Fromm throws complete again. This one complete to Tyler Simmons. And he's got about eight more. 
You know, there's good things about being the quarterback, but when you got number 92 coming at you, you have to be able to throw the ball flat-footed. You know, it's nice, all those drills, step into it, front knee, but sometimes you just got to get rid of it and prompt it on that one. And he took a lick. He did. From that guy. Watch him throw this ball flat-footed as you see. The, his record against the blitz, very impressive. Second and two. That's Miko Hardman in motion. Elijah Holyfield's got the first down and dives his way to the 16. Williams again helped in on the stop. Impressive looking drive by Georgia right here. You know what's also impressive is the play selection. 29 plays. They've run the ball 14 times and thrown the ball 15 times. Jim Cheney is keeping the Alabama defense off balance. And you saw five rushes, six passes to carry them to this first and 10 at the 16. All four receivers to the top of your screen. But they keep it on the ground. And Holyfield just powers his way for six or seven more. Looked like he was going to be stopped near the line of scrimmage. And he just kept carrying tied defenders with him. Okay, so you can see the game plan unfolding. Jake Fromm is responsible for hitting the edges of the Alabama offense. They're running the ball between the tackles. They're respecting the speed of the linebackers for Alabama, and they're running right at them. So Jake's in charge of the outside, and the line and the running backs are running inside. They've had it for over seven minutes. Second down and three at the nine. Swift trying to pick his way inside to the end zone. Touchdown, Georgia. DeAndre Swift, a nine-yard touchdown run. And he put his patented foot out the open. It's his dead leg. Watch his step and run right through Savion Smith, number four. That one foot, he plants that right foot and then cuts off it. He's been doing it for two years. Our Chick-fil-A pylon cam and DeAndre comes right at you. Blankenship for the point after. Up and good. Unless they did it both. They held the ball and they scored 13 plays. And the capper, DeAndre Swift, as Gary said, his high school coach calls that the dead leg. Nothing dead about that touchdown run. Georgia back in front by seven. Coming up, the halftime, Dr. Pepper tuition giveaway. Whoever can throw more footballs into those giant Dr. Pepper cans, we'll be getting some serious change that you can use for tuition. <laughs> There's the jubilation yeah. that we'll see from somebody at halftime. Hey, hey I, that's the way I look for cash, I'll tell you that. <laughs> so Georgia, 74-yard drive and 13 plays, and that's how you keep it away from the high-powered Alabama offense. They used half the quarter. And finished, and finished. That's what you got to continue to do. I think once you cross the 30, 25-yard line, you feel like you got three in your pocket. Exactly, yep. But you finished it with seven. And the guy that capped it with the extra point, Blankenship, to kick. There's not many that are not touchbacks from this guy, and this will be another. The second today, and the 76th time he's had a touchback kick this year. Well, number 13, Jonathan Ledbetter, one of the stalwarts of that offensive line, defensive line for Georgia, came back. He was an original commit to Alabama, but he said he came back and forego the NFL for a chance to play against Alabama, and he's going to get a chance to tackle number two. I guess. Jalen Hurts in a quarterback. Both of them. Both of them are in there. Two is and a wide there. receiver at the top of your screen. The throws out in the flat to Damian Harris. He's going to be dropped for a loss of one. Tay Crowder, one of the inside linebackers, makes the stop. Always felt good about that as a quarterback. You lead him out for a touchdown. And the last time you're out there, and they put another quarterback in the game. <laughs> you like that part. <laughs> well, it worked for Georgia, but now Hurts is out at wide receiver. And he's in the slot. 
Back of the lower back in the backfield. On second and 11. Plenty of time to throw. Skips off the hands of his intended receiver, Henry Ruggs, and then behind that, Devontae Smith couldn't handle it. Well, it would have been for basically no gain, but that's the third drop of the game. And that Georgia defense, who does not give up the big plays, only 19 pass plays of more than 19 yards this year, they're continuing to keep that ball in front of them. And third down and long again. Last in the SEC in sacks, but they put some pressure on Tua so far. All his receivers to his right. He looks that way, got some pressure, had to throw, and it is intercepted again. No, dropped by Baker. And he's fortunate, and that is the knock that I've had on Tua all year, right, Ness? He tries to make something out of nothing. Tries he's, too hard. Yes. He is unconscious. He has no conscience trying to make a big play, and he's lucky he didn't get a pick six here. If I think if Baker hadn't been worried about the sideline, yes. I think he'd have caught it. Right. And if it was a yard further inside, he just catches it and walks down the sideline for a touchdown. That's right. But he continues to try to make too much out of plays that aren't there. Alabama hasn't converted a third down. And now Nico Hardman backpedals on the punt at the 33 and comes straight ahead. And Hartman all the way out near midfield. Georgia's going to have great field position. They force a three and out. Hartman still not down. <laughs> and with 6.27 to go in the half, the Georgia fans are having a great time right now. We'll see how their offense does when we come back. Tuesday on CBS, when the witness protection program becomes a hit list, no one's safe. Don't miss a new FBI Tuesday after NCIS, only CBS. Let's test your knowledge right now with our AFLAC trivia question of the day. AFLAC! It is. Which SEC East team was the last to win back-to-back -back SEC championship games? Of course, Georgia won it a year ago. They're defending it here today, and they've got a great spot on the field, Gary, right now at their own 49. Yeah, and, and this is the time, of, and if you're Alabama, you got to be ready for something different. Fields in the game? Yes, he is. As is Brian Harrigan with him in the backfield. That's Miko Hardman. He dropped it. It's incomplete pass, though. So no harm on that one. Those little flips are passes. Yes. I didn't know that back in my day or I'd have flipped it every time. <laughs> every time I handed it off, I'd have flipped it. <laughs> and Hardman was thinking about where he was going but forgot to take the mail with him. So it's second down to 10. And that brings Jake Fromm back in. And DeAndre Swift with him. Warner, the tight end, comes in tight. On the left side, and three wide receivers, but it's Swift all the way. DeAndre Swift blasts his way to the 31. Well, that time Isaiah Wilson, number 79, got the edge blocked right there. And it actually gets up another block. He handles two of them. 20-yard pickup for DeAndre Swift. There he did the little hesitation again. And he gets it down. They're still pushing. He might get a first down out of this. And he did. Georgia offensive line. That dog pound is saying, you come and stop us if you can. The biggest question of this game was, would Alabama be too physical for Georgia? Let me answer that question. <laughs> no. No. Georgia back in the red zone. Once Swift got going, his group said, okay, we're coming with you. And now Holyfield back in with Fromm at the 18-yard line. First down. And Elijah only got about a yard. Dylan Moses, one of the first guys there. Deontay Thompson from the secondary as well. DeAndre Swift is going over the 1,000-yard mark now, including 10 touchdowns. Georgia averages 6.3 yards a carry on the season if you combine their backs, and that is number one in the SEC and number five in the country. Yeah, and since the LSU game, they've been on fire with their rushing game. 
At the five minute mark they've got a touchdown lead over the number one team in the country. The give on a little delay to Holyfield. He delays and then dives forward. Got it to the 11. This time it's Solomon Kinley, number 66, that leads the play. They're taking turns. Left guard gets the key block, stays on his block, and that's Quinn and Williams he's handling on the play. This Georgia offensive line has been, the, besides Jake Fromm, have been the star of the game, or the story of the game, yep. whichever way you want to put it. Third down, a short three. Everybody in tight. Oh, he's wide open. Bomb to Swift. Swift to the end zone. Touchdown. right here one guy goes in motion Alabama's pushing two of a move nobody covers number seven run through a tackle that is good coaching that is game planning Georgia on fire on offense Alabama hasn't been behind this big all year they're about to be two touchdowns back with four to play in the second quarter Blankenship's extra point is good well, DeAndre know, Swift had three first downs on that drive. And the third one was the capper. From to Swift, 11 yards to cap a 51-yard march. And the Dogs leading number one Alabama by 14. Look at the GMC game changer, Garrett. And it's the offensive line. First touchdown. Can you handle the Alabama pass rush? Look at that pocket. Perfect throw, but perfect pocket. The second time, runoff tackle. Yep. A lot of guys can make the secondary miss and watch the hidden offensive line. Alabama stunts, stunts right here. But watch the Alabama line. Thomas and Kinley handle the stunt and allow the quarterback to step into the throw. The offensive line for Georgia's on fire. But so is the whole team. Everybody talked about all week when they'd ask us questions and I uh, kept answering if Georgia plays a perfect game they can win. They bet a perfect half almost. <laughs> it. And no return coming. Here's the deal though. Georgia has had no trouble getting the lead. It's been holding the exactly. lead. Exactly. This week Colbert's all new with Julia Roberts. Jeff Daniels and Senator Bernie Sanders. Plus Monday catch Captain Gina Jones. All new Colbert this week on CBS. By that I mean in 2012 they had a 21 to 10 lead. Last year a 20 to 7 lead. Now four minute mark here. Alabama can take this game two touchdown down. Remember they get the ball to start the second half. They can make this a game again with the drive here and then they get the ball back. Remember I told you that trailing thing only lasted 70 seconds at Ole Miss. It's lasted six minutes and 38 seconds courtesy of Georgia. But here comes Josh Jacobs. There goes Josh Jacobs. Jacobs inside the 30. Still on his feet. Wow, what a run. Well, the old reliable running game and that time the Alabama Offensive line showed what they can do. Let Leatherwood did the job pulling around. That is the type of football that Alabama plays when they're on their running game. And that's Damian Harris. And Harris blasts his way off the right side. That was a 59-yard career long run, by the way, for Josh Jacobs. They yes. got them where they are right now. Going back to that 2012 SEC championship game, remember Georgia blocked the field goal to take a 21 to 10 lead. You know what Alabama did after that? They ran the ball 11 straight times for 136 yards and two touchdowns. That's how they started out this drive. 59 yard rush and then a four yard carry. And that's second down and six from the 12. Damian Harris again, and Harris has got the first down. He might have more to the one. 
the senior drags Bulldogs down to the one yard line. And you know that Alabama offensive line has been watching these big TV screens above and say coach give us a chance to block like that. We want to do the same. And now again they try quarterback sneak and it lost yardage. Uh, was they offsides Georgia. Could be. Yeah I think they were offsides. Side. On Number 27 lined up in the neutral zone half the distance. First down. Well, that's a bad one on the edge of the formation. Eric Stokes, who had nothing to do with the play, lined up in the neutral zone. And you can see Kirby Smart's beside himself on that one. Way out oh, <laughs> I got my pump and run guy yeah. way out here, except I'm a yard in the backfield. Eric, you might want to look down the line there. Uh oh, big, big news right there. Going off the field is Deontay Brown. Struggling with that toe problem. He's their most physical guard. They rush up to the line again, though, on first and goal. Jacobs is the guy that got him down there. And he lost the ball going in. Wait a minute. It's a touchback. He lost the football. He's saying, look to the replay. George is celebrating, thinking they have the ball now, back. Was he down before the ball was knocked out of his hand? That'll be the question. Watch him reach out. Second effort, ball's, ball's out. down. Now see if he can grab the ball. The ruling on the field is the ball was fumbled forward, recovered by Georgia for a touchback. The problem is it looked like Josh Jacobs got the ball back. The play we had before, the angle we had before, Jacob gets the ball and controls it across the line. The previous play is under further review. There's the dive to try to get the ball back, and it looks and like he had it. it. Yes, he does. That's going to be a touchdown. We've seen a little bit of everything so far. J.R. Reed reacted smartly to poke it loose, but I think Jacobs gets it and controls it right there. I agree with you, Gary. The play under review, the call on the field was fumble recovered by Georgia. Boy, and he had to run through two tackles to even get close. Patrick inside makes the first hit. Jawan Taylor makes the second hit. And was it Taylor that uh, pushed it out? Jacobs, Josh Jacobs, very fortunate to be able to have that ball bounce to him, but he did get it back. And I think he had it long enough and controlled it. Stan Murray's our replay official. We see Nick Saban just took his headset off and said, What's the call to the field judge? That guy's saying touchdown. Gary and I are seeing After touchdown. After review, the ball was fumbled by Alabama and recovered by Alabama. Touchdown for Alabama. It goes a one yard touchdown. And that's why we have instant replay right there. And when you and I first started doing this, we would have just had to live <laughs> with it being a touchback and not a touchdown. But they got it right, and that's the goal. Right now, Josh Jacob is the luckiest guy in Mercedes Benz Stadium. He had the beautiful run, a career long, to get him down inside the 20. Then it was Damian Harris doing the work to get it to the one. And the extra point is up and good. So it ends up being a 75 yard touchdown drive in four plays. Jacobs, the long run, and he said, I tell you, I got it back. Josh, you're right, you did. 21 14. We asked you the Outback trivia question a little bit earlier. Which SEC East team has won back-to-back -back SEC championships? The last game to uh, last team to do it. I got this one all messed up the other day. <laughs> Tennessee. Yeah, I was guessing Florida. Me too. Yep. I was going Florida all the way. Philip Fulber last night uh, as an SEC legend got his award last night along with 13 other legends at the banquet. Coach Fulmer now athletic director. High short kick. Somebody's got to get to it unless it gets out of bounds. It's still live right there at the two. And it's going to pay off for the special teams for Alabama. Yeah, very 
poorly mishandled by the receiving team for Georgia, and it cost them. Brian Harry in that time misjudged it. And now I'm thinking, okay, Georgia's going to get the ball at the 25 with three timeouts. They're going to let Fromm do whatever he wants. Right. But now you have to question, what do you do? 218, Alabama with two timeouts. We'll see. Seems like Jake has earned the trust, don't you think? Yeah, I think so. I know before we had him, I don't know what game. Remember he went to the tight end, Nauta, all the way down the field? Yeah, four straight. Yep. I think it was Florida game, was it? That sounds right. Swift dropped at the line of scrimmage, maybe actually a loss. We're checking with Jamie. Brad, I asked Jake Fromm this week, what's different leading up to this game? He said, I have more schoolwork. Not really the answer I was anticipating, but he said, really, I have three tests, one in microeconomics, one in economics, and one in risk management insurance. Great, Gary, what grade you would you give Jake Fromm in well, risk he, management insurance so right now? So far, he's got an A. All That's right, there you go. We should tell his professors. Boy, you know, I would have said, hey, you know, I got enough on my plate. I, in fact, if I have the professor, I don't even look at the test. I just give him an A. <laughs> Good for Jake, all those tests. He's got one here at the six-yard line, but he does have a touchdown lead. It'll be Swift again. Blitz is coming in the middle. It is Swift for one. Alabama should take a timeout now, and they do. That'll leave him with one. And that'll force Georgia to make a decision here. Do they throw to try to get a first down? Because if they run, Alabama will take another one. We're going to find out in a minute. It's going to be decision time for Georgia. Gary said on a third down, don't forget, as Zook just said a little while ago, Geico halftime report is coming up in a minute and 22 seconds of game time. And uh, run down that Big 12 championship. A look at what we've seen here. here. Here's the question for Jim Chaney. Do you trust Jake Fromm more than you trust your defense? Because if you play it safe here, Alabama's going to get great field position. I'm trusting Jake Fromm. The way he's thrown it today, I am too. But I don't trust Quentin Williams and the guys on the defensive front for Alabama. Fromm will throw from his own goal line. On a crossing route to Swift. Gives some ground, looks for a block. Ran out of real estate, though. He's short of the first down. It was, it was fun, and he probably ran 30 yards, but it, it was sideways, backwards, and inside out. Not a lot of guys can do this and that and this and that. And the hurdle job almost got him to the first down marker. He's about a two yard shot. And the only thing he could have done better was stay in bounds because Alabama saves a timeout. And we've already seen what number 17 can do. Had a long punt return earlier in the game that set up the Alabama score. They're coming after the putter and they might have roughed him. Flags are down. It's going to be a first down Georgia, whether it's running into or roughing. I don't get it, Alabama. I really don't get it. You've got Tua Tungvaloa. You've got receivers and weapons all over the running field. Running into the kicker, number 31 on the defense. That five-yard penalty results in a first down. Now, if it was fourth and seven, I get it. But you've got an offense that have been scoring all year. You don't need to block a kick to score. You took the ball away from your offense, and they would have had it near midfield. I thought it was too risky of a call by Coach Saban. And the freshman punter gets run into, and that is an automatic first down for Georgia at the 19-yard line. First penalty of the ball game, and it's a big one. Now remember, Georgia has three timeouts. And they've got number 11 throwing it around. And a field goal kicker that can make them from 52 yards. Exactly. Draw play, Swift. Bounces it outside. Not going to get there, though. Nice job defensively. Patrick Sertan and Mac Wilson track him down. And now Georgia not taking a timeout. The 45-second mark. Gonna be comfortable, I guess, going to the locker room. And Jake Fromm's going, don't you want me to do something here, coach? <laughs> uh, what, what did Jamie say? Risk advertisement or what was <laughs> whatever that? that was. Yes. Risk management. Yes. Well, they're managing it. So unless whipped rips off a big run here, it looks like they'll go to the locker room at halftime. Well, Fromm's gonna come up throwing. 
Lobs it over the middle. Oh, that was dangerous. Oh my goodness. If you're going to throw the ball, you want to throw it down the sidelines as far as you can. A 10 yard throw over the middle of the field. Here's where the ball needs to go right there. Outside, outside. If anything bad happens, let it happen way down there. But and don't don't throw it to not there. Shaheem Carter. You see, he puts his, and he goes, Oh, I should have gone into that course one more time. Because <laughs> that, I, I just went from an A to a D in one play. <laughs> now Holyfield's with him in the backfield, and Elijah will get the carry. And just looking for a place to land. Now you can call timeout and try to block the punt. And they do take a timeout. Eight seconds remaining in the half. The Paradise Inferno was hell on earth, so how will they recover? New videos and stories you won't believe. Plus three former presidents reflect on the life of George Herbert Walker Bush. Only on 60 Minutes tomorrow. President Bush passed away yesterday at the age of 94. We send our condolences to the Bush family. Alabama's not even putting anyone deep on this play. They're going to go for the block and not even try to catch it. Good timeout by Kirby. Time out. Good timeout. Mentioned President Bush, the 41st president of the United States, died yesterday at the age of 94. A lifelong baseball fan. He played the first two College World Series with Yale, and he's credited as the first president to throw a ceremonial first pitch from the pitcher's mound ahead of a major league game. I was fortunate enough to meet the president a couple of times at Texas A&M games. I have a picture with him in my office that I display proudly. We send our condolences to the family of presidents. Me as well. When I was playing with the Browns, he came into Cleveland to do an event, and I got to stand on the podium with him. And Pretty nice. Not bad. Well, I think Kozar got me up there. It was <laughs> Kozar and me. I, I was the extra guy. You know, I was hanging around. What a great gentleman, President Bush. Eight seconds left. Back comes the Georgia punt team. I like putting a guy back there because the kicker in this situation knows he has no risk of return. He can just kick it as fast as he gets it. Jake Camarda, freshman out of Norcross. Catch it and get rid of it. Here they come. And he not only got rid of it, did a pretty nice job to get it out across midfield. And uh, might have used all the clock. It did. Good job by number 90. It's halftime. Georgia fans are thinking, can we get them back? Last year, we took them to overtime and we let them off the hook because of that guy. And now with a touchdown lead at the break, the number four team in the land leading the top ranked Crimson Tide by a touchdown. To Jamie with Coach Saban. Coach, you've been plagued by slow starts recently, and then to see some mental errors in the first half, how do you make those adjustments now? Well, you know, we did make some mental errors. Um, you know, we got to play better on defense. They're running the ball on us. We're not staying in our gaps. We're not executing the calls that we're making. So uh, we got to do better. But we've also squandered opportunities by throwing an interception down in the red area, not moving the ball consistently enough on, you know, offense when we have it. So dropping a couple balls, so all in all, not a real good half. All right, Coach, thanks. Thank you. Nick could be an analyst. That pretty yeah. much summarized it, yes. <laughs> that pretty much wraps up the half. Yeah. End of the first half. 21-14, Georgia in front. We'll be back with a Dr. Pepper tuition giveaway after this message from your local station. Mercedes-Benz Stadium, 21-14, Alabama with the lead over the top-ranked Tide. Brad Nessler and Gary Danielson, all year we've been saying, who's going to give Alabama a run for their money? Georgia's doing it right now. <laughs> yeah, and they're doing it in every phase, but mostly with their quarterback. Right. I mean, he's played a great game. 
Tua's only thrown for 35 yards, but you know at halftime last time, he had zero yards. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so Georgia has to continue to be aggressive. Last year, they took their foot off the gas a little bit, started to run the ball too much. It's Jake Fromm's game. Third quarter is coming up, but right now, a taste of tradition presented by Sonic. Here's Jamie. One of the great traditions here at Championship Weekend is the induction of the latest class of SEC legends. The class of 2018 was highlighted by Alabama's great running back, Sean Alexander, and Georgia's spectacular multi-purpose player, Heinz Ward. The evening was capped off when the quarterback, Ole Miss legend Archie Manning, was honored with the Michael L. Slive Distinguished Service Award, given in honor of the former SEC commissioner who passed away this spring. And Archie and I had a chance to spend about three hours together drinking Diet Pepper after that was over last <laughs> night. That was a lot of fun. Well, it was a little bit of everything for Alabama in that first half. Nick talking to Jamie, he summed it up, as he you did. said, exactly the way it happened. Georgia 3-1 and one with her up at half in these games. Alabama, not so good. But these are two different teams. And the second half is underway. Here we go. Blankenship again with another touchback kick and miscues by Alabama. Oh. Yeah, started off early in this football game. It was an interception when Tua tried to look it off and he looked it right into an interception. Then the drop ball and I think drop ball again and then Tua tried to do too much. It has been one of his kind of lessons he has not learned yet. Everything's been going so good, but remember, as we said, they might be 0-4 in the SEC championship games, but he came in at halftime in the national championship game, down 13. He was three out of eight for 35 yards in that interception in the first quarter. They keep it on the ground here, and maybe a yard gain for Damian Harris as we check in with Jamie. Oh, Brad, it's nice when coaches tell us something pregame and then they follow through with it. Like Kirby Smart, he said, we're going to change it up against Alabama. And he told me at the half, that's exactly what's been working for them. In terms of Fromm's play, he said he's the quarterback I thought he would be today. He also turned around to Julian Rochester and said, hey, you got one chance to get angry, and this is it in the second half. With a touchdown lead, and a second down at 10 for Alabama on their opening possession of the third. Tagovailoa looking left the whole time. Fires it batted down. Somebody got a hand on it en route. Might have been DeAndre Walker who's having a whale of a game. Yes, it was. First half game trends. Tua, those are unlike Tua numbers, that's for sure. But the drop passes didn't help. Jake Fromm, as Gary said, almost perfect. And Alabama, they have trailed now for almost 11 minutes. And Alabama is 0 for 3 in this game. And last game in the national championship, they were 3 for 14. So they are now 3 for their last 17 on third down. And they're going to have to earn this one. It's third and 10. Tagovailoa wanted to go down the middle, and now he has to just throw it away. And this might be a grounding, too. He got hit. I, I think he was in the grasp, and he's going to get it. Did not pass. Get past the line of scrimmage. It'll be intentional grounding or a sack. And one he's of the lifting two. again. Intentional grounding on the offense, number 13. That's a spot foul. Loss of down. Fourth down. Again, think about what Georgia is doing. They are tied for last in the SEC in sacks coming into this game with 20. Alabama has 40, okay? And they are controlling this game. The offense and defensive lines, what I told you before the game, that's all week. Yep. I question whether they could stand up. They have stood up big. That was Channing Tindall, true freshman who applied the pressure, forced the intention of grounding, and thus the punts. Not very high. Nicole Hartman camps under it at the 39. And he got across the 45. There's a flag down late around the 42-yard line. Might have had a block in the back, which is normally the call on these things. Either way, Georgia forced a three and outs on the opening possession for Alabama. Sometimes it's just wonder on these punt things if you just be better off just fair catching them yeah, all the time. You exactly. Know? <laughs> At least you're not going to get a flag out of it. Right. Big discussion here, trying to figure out exactly where it happened. And remember, Georgia had the ball right on the almost 50 yard line. Oh, we got two penalties a face mask and a false start. 
Yeah, there's one all the way back on the 11-yard line. It must have been an illegal formation for, for Alabama. Punt formation. Too many men in the backfield. This guy right here was called in the backfield. They've already had four others. You can only have four. And then right at the bottom, you can see the push right there. There are two fouls against, there's fouls against both teams. Illegal formation, more than four in the backfield on the kicking team. Personal foul face mask during the return, number 87 on the return team. Those penalties will offset, will replay fourth down. So we'll do it again. So the illegal formation, another mental error. Jamie heard from Nick Saban at halftime, too many mental mistakes. They come out, a three and out, a sack, and a mental mistake. Yep. That's the trifecta. Sure is. Can't do much worse than that. Just when they were cheering the fact that they were going to get the football first to start the third quarter, trailing by a touchdown, and, and everything went haywire yeah, and last year Miko Hardman almost had two punt returns in the national championship game that he busted tackled right by the shoe he's got one touchdown this year of 70 yards won't have a chance at this one fair catch right around midfield that's the safe thing as Gary said no flags and Georgia at the 49 yard line with the ball with the lead in Atlanta this SEC Championship Time and Moment is presented by Jared the Galleria of Jewelry. In 2017, after falling behind 7-0, Georgia tied it up when Jake Fromm found Isaac Nada in the back of the end zone. Fromm tossed another touchdown to Terry Godwin to give them a two-touchdown lead. DeAndre Swift ran it in from 64 yards out to seal the win for the Bulldogs, 28-7. This was their first SEC Championship since 2005. Rocket Mortgage by Quicken Loans brings you today's scholar athletes. Ross Pierce Becker, who anchors the offensive line for Alabama, and Isaac Nauta, who's got a touchdown pass today. Rocket Mortgage by Quicken Loans showing their commitment to the investment of our future by donating $1,000 to Alabama and Georgia's general scholarship fund. So Georgia's got it back with a touchdown lead after a three and out by the Tide, and it's first down at the 49-yard line. Here's that formation. Nope, they're going to shift it back the other way. Let's take Charlie Werner back over on the right side where Elijah Holyfield is lined up with Jake Fromm and gets the call. And Holyfield, wow, he's strong. And about seven more. We'll continue the story right here. Trey Hill, number 55, a true freshman, is playing at right guard. This Georgia offensive line has already lost Kendall Baker for the season. Ben Cleveland. There's Ben on the sideline. Number 74 right there. And Cade Mays, the true freshman. So they're really down to their number four guard, a true freshman at right guard, and they are Ben effective. Holyfield got seven, second down at three. At the Alabama 44. Elijah again cuts this one outside, got the first down, got the edge, has the speed to take it all the way to the 21 yard line. I tell you, Andrew Thomas, number 71, he's playing that left tackle spot that Isaiah Wynn played a year ago, and he gets the corner hooked. That's a great job. He took Isaiah Bugs, no edge defender right there, and Georgia gets outside. 21 yard pickup to the 23 yard line. Miko Hardman in the backfield and now flushes out of there. Empty set for Jake Fromm from the 23. Looks right, goes right to the end zone. Did he catch it? He did. Touchdown. Riley Ridley. From our press box, this ball went directly away from us. It was again another perfect pass. Savion Smith says if you could throw a ball that well, you get a touchdown. And he threw the ball that well. Look at that. There's about a foot window to throw the ball. And Jake Fromm did it. Can't play any coverage better than that. What a throw. Jake Fromm is putting on a show here tonight. Black and chip for the point after to try to get Georgia a two-touchdown lead. They're reviewing the play. 
I've always said, if you can't attack the bump and run coverage for Alabama, you don't have a chance. They are attacking, and not only attacking, they're succeeding. Lack and shit to try to make it a 14-point game. Extra point is up and good. 12:39 remaining in the third quarter. As Gary said, you throw it perfect. And Riley Ridley says, Jake, you put it in there, and I will catch it. Yes, they held the safety with a receiver going right down the middle. He knew before the snap where he was going to throw that ball. Ridley, who had eight catches, no, excuse me, six catches a year ago, catches a big one right there. His ninth of the year. It's 28-14. Tell you what, we came here expecting a Tua Tagovailoa party and a Jake Fromm party has broken out at Mercedes-Benz Stadium. He's an elite thrower and he's not a game manager. You said it two hours ago, right on the money. The return team doesn't have to worry about any kick. I want to show today. you some great coaching here by an offensive coordinator. Into the sideline, the short side, you put three receivers on this side. Alabama have to put four. You bring your running back to hold the safety. Right then, Jake Fromm knows he's got one on one to the outside with no help. He's confident in the throw. Plenty of space to throw it, and he makes a confident, perfect throw. Jim Cheney dialed it up, put his receivers into the short side, and gave his quarterback a lot of comfort to throw that play. He dialed it up, and Jake Fromm hit send. You got it. Josh Jacobs, a little hesitation, then bursts ahead for six or seven. Jawan Taylor made the tackle. Well, since they got down 14 points, Alabama has not attempted a pass. They get down 14 again, and they run the ball again. And I think they're going to have to do more than that, though. How quiet has Judy and Rugg, wow. Devontae Smith been in this game? There's only three completions out there, so they've all been quiet. <laughs> Funny how that works. Yeah. Empty backfield. Two will throw it here if he's not sacked. Throws over the middle and almost got picked off. Jawan Taylor had his hand on it. Ledbetter was applying the pressure. Well, the rumors are that defensive coordinator Mel Tucker is going to be, for Georgia, the new head coach at Colorado. Well, Colorado people, you got to love the way he's doing it here <laughs> because the tunnel screen dialed up on second down. Two ahead to wait. There was no one else to throw to. That was a screen pass. As Gary has said a couple of times, Georgia has really struggled with sacking the quarterback this year, but they are roughing Tua up today. Third and three. They fake the flip to Harris. They give it to Jacobs, and he's dropped for a loss. DeAndre Walker. That's 0 for 5 on third down in this football game. And remember, just a year ago, they were 3 for 14 when they won. That means in their last 19 third down plays, this Alabama offense has produced three first downs against Georgia. Kirby Smart and Mel Tucker have them dialed up. Now, can they finish? They've had big leads in the third quarter before. Nico Hardman backpedals to the 25. First man got to him. Nice coverage. By Ruggs on the special teams, the starting wide receiver to make the tackle. Yeah, he's the fastest man on the team, and they put him on there because of Miko Hardman. DeAndre Walker dialing up the crowd here. 28-14, Dogs. Football playoff rankings coming into the day. Here's how it looked. Notre Dame's regular season is over. Oklahoma went today over Texas, so they get back their only loss of the season. But we still have a lot of football to play. But let's say Georgia holds on and pulls an upset here. Boy, is in the debate going to begin. All right. You know, a lot of all week the talk was can Georgia play well enough to get in the argument if they lose to hold the fourth spot? Now the talk might be in the last two quarters, can Alabama play well enough? Still a long ways to go. 11-13 to the third and a fourth quarter after that. But Georgia's got it back with a two-touchdown lead at their own 25. 
All three wideouts to the left. It's straight up the middle though with DeAndre Swift. Got almost five out of that. Championship games. Georgia last year, this year. That's all last year. Or the last time around, I should say. That was 11 months ago, roughly. Well, you can't ignore that game. You can see how Georgia's playing. They are on fire thinking about that game. Motivated is like I've never seen it before. And whistle stops play. It's going to be the snap. Uh, All start. Offense number six. James Five yard penalty. Cook, the freshman Second running down. back. Well, the way the Georgia receivers and the accuracy of Jake Fromm, it now falls on the Alabama defensive line to change this football game. We've seen that Fromm is too good at throwing. So now, the way Georgia is pressuring Tua, that front four or five or whatever it takes, they have to put pressure on Jake Fromm. They've been out there a long time, too, the Alabama defense. Oh, yeah, they had 43 plays in the first half. That's almost unheard of against an Alabama defense. A little bit of a clock issue. They've got that straightened out. There's the guy I wonder about when you get into the fourth quarter with this many snaps on offense. Does number 92 start slowing down? Alabama is showing some pressure. They bring it off the corner. Fromm throws down the middle. Isaac Nada. Nada. Still running. All the way to the 20. There's no doubt in my mind that Jake Fromm knew the blitz was coming and he was ready for the adjustment to Nada in the slot right there. She stalls and goes. Boy, you cannot peek. When you're a safety and you got man to man, that's your job. Georgia goes with some tempo here, but Swift's tempo stopped by Christian Miller. You got your man. You cannot peek into the backfield. Man on man coverage. It's a flex. What are you looking in the backfield for? Deontay Thompson makes the sin of a man to man cover player peeking in the backfield when he's got somebody in the slot. Shaheem Carter's the guy that saved a touchdown. Nonetheless, it was a 55-yard career-long reception for the tight end Isaac Nata, who has a touchdown in this game as well. Georgia threatening again with a two-touchdown lead. From under center, fakes it to Swift, goes out to Swift in the flat, and he's inside the 15. So Alabama worried about the way that Georgia is throwing the ball downfield. But if you've got a quarterback that is patient, you know, sometimes when you get hot, you think you can throw the ball in any little hole. Right. Well, that time Fromm said, no, no, those holes are too small. I'm going to drop it off, second down, win second down, get to third and medium. Right now he's got a third down and manageable four to go. I, I, I think Alabama has to bring pressure here. Harrion in the backfield with Fromm from the 13. Now he empties that backfield. Fromm throws incomplete intended for Riley Ridley. And that one was behind him. Jake's looking up at the replays if to say, where was he or where did I throw it? Yeah, they did not. They dropped back. Alabama defense only rushed four. Miscommunication. Fromm thought he was going to go outside. Good stop. Huge stop by the Alabama defense. Last year in the championship game, Rodrigo Blankenship hit from 41, 27, and 51 in overtime. This will be just outside 30. 19 of 22 on the year. Blankenship to try to tack three more on for Georgia. Up and wide left. He missed it. So that gives Alabama a little bit of life. That's the second break so far in this game for Alabama. The fumble by Josh Jacobs and the missed chip shot by Blankenship. Is it going to snow? If it does, Army's the home team. They'll be wearing black. <laughs> At least year. they won't have white uniforms <laughs> with gold numbers. I got some good news. <laughs> well, you see the last six drives, three and out on four of them.
from the 20. Najee Harris stood up after a short gain of about two. It's been a pressure-packed day for Tua Tagovailoa. Well, the supposed weakness of Georgia has been their strength tonight, rushing the passer. All year, they've been the question has been, can they affect the quarterback? Well, they sure have affected him tonight. If you'd have told me Georgia would have 190 more passing yards yeah, than Alabama exactly. at this stage of the game, I would have uh, said you were out too late right. last night. Well, I'm never out too late, but somebody might have been, right? Tagovailoa down the middle. Got his man, and it's Jalen Waddle who bounces off the tackle. There's a big play they were looking for out to the 45 yard line. As you said a little earlier, enormous amount of time left in this football game coming right to the middle, and this time it's not a drop ball. This Georgia defense trying to keep everything in front of them, so you have to be patient enough to take those throws in the middle and the perimeter. 10, 12, 15 yarders. Najee Harris and Josh Jacobs flanking Tua in the backfield. With the RPO comes up and throws behind Waddle incomplete. That wasn't close. Yeah, I, I think that time the defender was a good jam on Waddle and kind of broke up the play that time. One way to handle the speed is to jam the receivers and reroute them. And I think Georgia did a good job that time. See Jalen Hurts, the backup quarterback who was a starter all the way to the halftime of the championship game last year, walking the sideline near Coach Saban. Georgia with a blitz. Tua delivers to Judy. Ball is out, but he got on top of it for the first down. Well, one thing you know about the receivers for Alabama, when they catch the ball, they're thinking score. They're not thinking first down. Good pickup on the blitz that time, or effective pickup on the blitz that time by Najee Harris. Punched out, and another fumble recovery. DeAndre Walker, has he been everywhere? Yeah. Tagovailoa loads, goes long, incomplete, intended oh, for Devontae Smith. It's going to be a tug. It's going to be a tug by Eric Stokes. He grabbed his arm. It's going to be holding. Funny, that ball was going to the same corner of yes. this field as the one that won it in overtime last year to the same receiver. I don't blame him for tugging, though. A tug's better than a touchdown. Right there, he grabs him. Oof. And you can't say it's not, not catchable. Devontae Smith can, made up 26 yards on the throw for the touchdown. You can't say that ball was not catchable. Pass interference right. on the defense, number 27, 15-yard penalty, first down. The ball landed in the field, and the tug slowed down the receiver enough. That's not an overthrow. Broke his momentum on the throw. When that ball was released last year for the touchdown mess, Devontae Smith was on the 26-yard line, and he caught it at the goal line. The ball was only in the air 2.3 seconds. <laughs> you told me that the other day. I couldn't believe it. Tagovailoa going deep again. It's intercepted by J.R. Reed. Interception of the red zone for the dogs today. And Jalen Reed looked like he was 10 yards away from the throw when it was released, but he made up the throw. He's throwing the ball to number 17, Waddle. The ball is poorly thrown. Did you see how Waddle had to stop for the ball? That's when Reed was able to close and make the play. A poor throw by Tua. And a second interception by Georgia. And the fans of that end are going so crazy that the offensive line is saying quiet down because Jake's not going to be able to be heard. And the savage gear for the Georgia defense on the takeaway on the shoulders of J.R. Reed. Elijah Holyfield, a little bit of room out across the five. Again, that front four. 
three, four, five, however you want to look at it. Three down linemen, the two defensive linebackers that are our glorified ends now have to help out their football team. They got to get a stop here if you're Alabama. Down under six and a half minutes in the third quarter. 347 yards of offense for Georgia so far. Holy field again as they play it safe. He got a nice block. Can he get to the edge? Well, he got it out around the eight. Good job of staying with it for McKinney to bring him down. It was Holman number nine who got the block on Carter number five. Don't know. I think that was a clean block. Yep. It wasn't in the back. Good enough. Yep. Field with that spin move got himself about four more yards out of it. It's still third down and five. Swift in the backfield. Will Jake Fromm throw one? Deontay Thompson almost looked like he was going to blitz from the secondary. Fromm says, slow down, let's reload here. And now Alabama's able to go dime because Maiden's in the game. They'll play it safe to Swift. Never safe if you can't bring him down, though, but he's short, I think. And yes. This, this time, Shaheem Carter is again saying, that's the second time I got blocked in the back. <laughs> Left side of your screen, let's see if we can see. Right there, that one could have been in the black that time. That one could have been in the back, but it's going to be fourth and short, and Alabama's getting the ball anyway. Jake Kamara now in a tough spot, punting from his own end zone. Remember, they came after him a couple of times already. You would think they'd give Waddle a chance after the big return he had on the first one. They do have the return on. Oh, man, he hit it a mile into the skylight of Mercedes-Benz Stadium. Great kick. But Alabama's got it back, trailing by a couple of touchdowns. Tomorrow on CBS, country sensation Garth Brooks will rock the house that rocked me, Bill. It's the first live concert ever held at legendary Notre Dame Stadium. Don't miss Garth live at Notre Dame tomorrow after 60 minutes, only CBS. Brad Nessler, Gary Daniels, and Jamie Erdahl and our CBS crew. A great one going with four and a half, remaining in the third quarter. Fourth-ranked Georgia with a two-touchdown lead over top-ranked Alabama. To uh, the throw, complete out to Ruggs. And Ruggs dives close to a first down, brought down by DeAndre Baker. Well, if you've got a shooter, you know, if he's Steph Curry and he's missed a bunch of shots, he's just say, Coach, keep I'm shooting. due. I'm, I'm going to keep <laughs> shooting, okay? Remember Rick Berry saw one time said that, uh, I missed uh, 20 shots, I'm due. And that's how you got to look at it if you're Tua. Keep calling it. Damian Harris, first down run. Out to the 45. J.R. Reed, who had that interception, knocked him down. Damian, back-to-back 1,000-yard -back seasons up until this year, but he's still the leading rusher on this Alabama team. And Alabama's decided to go tempo. We only got 18 minutes and 47 seconds left. Tangovaloa throws into some traffic, but it's complete. To near midfield, Devontae Smith. It'll be second down and five from the 49. Irv Smith's been quiet since that one pass aimed at him that he dropped. He's in a slot on the left. Tagovailoa throws complete Waddle in full stride. Jalen Waddle gone. Touchdown Alabama. Keep shooting. I'm due. 51 yards. Last week against Auburn at the end of the game, Waddle took one just like that and got the corner. Again, he shows his speed might be the fastest guy on the team. The true freshman, Jalen Waddle, took it and got to the corner. No contest. With three minutes remaining in the third, Bulibus in for the point after. An all-important one is up and good. 
Watch this acceleration after the catch. And right there it is. I'll see it. 72 yards in four plays. That's more like the Alabama we've seen all year. And they've drawn to within seven. More than one interception. Two today, but he just delivered a 51-yard touchdown. That has pulled the tide within a touchdown. And Georgia will work from the 25-yard line as their lead's been cut to seven. Just over three minutes to go in the third quarter. Well, with the poor field position last time, Georgia was basically a run team. Right. And he didn't move the ball. Let's see now with this posi field position if Cheney and this offense says we've got a hot quarterback, we cannot shut this offense down by being too conservative. Jake Fromm has the number two passer rating in the SEC. The number one passer rating belongs to the guy on the other side. And there's his numbers today, which are considerably better than two at Tagovailoa's. Fromm's going to keep it. Goes for about five. Moses made the tackle. Jake has not run hardly at all this year. But that one picked him up. Boy, his knee <laughs> must have say three yards. Must have, his knee must have come down before he went forward. Usually if you slide, it's the beginning of the slide, but his knee must have touched. So they put it at the 28. We're at second and seven. Empty set. Fromm with five receivers. Fires far side. Got it complete. The stop and go by Ridley, and he's out to the 39-yard line. Riley, whose brother Calvin will be playing in here tomorrow against the Baltimore Ravens. Again, this offensive line handles the stunts for Alabama. Watch them handle Quinn and they push it all, but everybody gets kind of clogged up there. The offensive line, the left side, Thomas and Kinley do a great job. First down at the 39. Final two minutes of the third quarter. Delayed handoff, Holyfield ran into Matt Wilson and he brought him down right there. Let's check, you know, check into Jamie. Well, Brad, it's been a cool weekend for the Ridley brothers, both playing in Atlanta, but really it's been the whole season. Calvin told me that every Sunday night, Riley makes the one hour drive to Swanee and they don't watch Sunday night football together. They bring each other's game tape and they break down each other's routes. And it's mostly Calvin telling Riley to have tough hands, but sometimes Riley gives Calvin advice too. <laughs> That's great. Calvin having a it's working for both. Yeah, it is Calvin having a rookie <laughs> of the year type season for Atlanta despite their record. Second and ten. Charlie Werner in motion to the slot from sets scrambles. He's going to run with it. This time he slides short of the first down by about a yard and a half. Makes it third and short. About what two yards short. Good coverage. Now remember, we see the line, but Jake Fromm can't see any right. line. Yeah, they're going to spot it right at third and two. Boy, what do you do here? You think you can run? Swift has been money running the football. Can your line handle this defensive line for Alabama, or do you have to hand the ball to Jake Fromm? Coming into this game, Georgia had, had trouble on third and short. They haven't today. Blitz is coming. Fromm throws into it and it's batted down. Shaheen Carter, I think the guy that brought the blitz, is the guy that got a hand on it. Well, that's back to back third down stops for this Alabama defense. And as Ness told you, it was a blitz coming off the edge. Nobody handles Carter at all. That's a good design by that Alabama defense. Georgia 0 for 3 on their third downs now in this quarter. And it's fourth. Camarda, who hit a super punt last time. And Henry Ruggs is way down there on the other end. Trying to keep this one on the field of play. Can he? Nope, too far. 
11 seconds remaining in the third quarter. You had to almost be here a few minutes ago during the last timeout we had. This place was so quiet. 73,000 people could never make less noise. Right. And I think it's just because the fans took a big deep breath and said, Whew, are we going to have a fourth quarter? There's a quarterback comparison. You know what? I think both sets of fans obviously saw last year's game and know uh, there's a lot to go. Here. Yeah. <laughs> we might go overtime. Yes. Who knows? Great football. Both sides laying it on the line. Great game plans. Everything at play. From the 20. Play action. Tagovailoa steps into it, throws a dart complete, and it's rugs again. Boy, you can see what this Alabama offense can look like. Georgia looking up at the clock, can't look at the clock, and they went at their best, best against best. DeAndre Baker was there, but the throw was too good. What a fourth quarter we're going to have. 28-21 will return to Atlanta after this message and a word from your local station. Everybody in this building had four fingers up, whether you're an Alabama fan or a Georgia fan, because the fourth quarter is going to decide this one. 28-21, Georgia with a lead, Alabama with the ball. Jacobs with two on the backfield, but he's set to throw. Pressure coming down the middle, incomplete, a little bit behind Henry Ruggs. That's something you don't see very often, right, Ness? No, he usually hits everybody in stride. No, I meant the fourth quarter pass. Oh, that too? <laughs> what is he, one for two this year yeah, or something like one that? one for three now, or two for three. Hey, we've wanted this all year long, a game like this. We got it, partner. We do. Two great football teams, and they're laying it. Great football players all over the field, and two is now hot. Six for his last nine for 116 yards. Second down from the 37 for Alabama. Tagovailoa steps up, throws, and that one's in and out of the hands of Judy. That was nice coverage by Tyreek McGee. A little surprised Tua didn't try to run on that play. It was tight coverage. I wonder if it's his ankle still bothering him just enough that he says, I'm not going to run it, I'm going to throw it. They have never trailed in the fourth quarter this year. Remember, 0 for 5 for the day on third down. 0 for 3 of those passing. Here's another passing down third and 10. Tagovailoa, Georgia brought an extra man and they got him from behind. DeAndre Walker, I think, again. His pocket, his metal clock in the pocket is just off. The offensive line has done a decent job here. That's about as much time as you can expect. Walker comes from the back end, but when you're bringing that much pressure, you have to get rid of the football. That's three for the last 20 third downs that Kirby Smart's defense has done against this Alabama offense in the last two games. Forcing the punt, end over end punt. Hardman backs out of the way, says everybody clear out. It goes out of bounds in front of the Georgia bench around the 26 yard line, somewhere in there. 14 31 to go. Georgia's got the lead. They've got the ball when we come back. Now it's time for our Exxon Mobile game recap between undefeated Alabama and once defeated Georgia. And it has not been a normal two attack of a low a day. Two interceptions, one by Richard LeCount there early in the game. Another one went to J.R. Reed. DeAndre Swift has scored on the ground. And as a receiver, one of three touchdown passes by Jake Fromm today. Jake has been sensational for Georgia. Josh Jacobs, though, has kept Alabama in it with a couple of touchdowns, including a lucky one there where he recovered his own fumble. But here's the numbers for Jake. And you can't throw it any better than that one to Riley Ridley. And then to a tag of a low on the crossing route to Jalen Waddle, 51 yards, and that's where we sit. With 14.31 to go, 28-21. Georgia's got it back 
at its own 27 yard line. And believe me, looking at those stats, they know that they have to ride that quarterback. Last year, they took the ball out of his hands in the national championship game. They're not going to do that this time. That's for sure. There's the different numbers from 11 months apart. Georgia did not finish a year ago. Only two first downs in the fourth quarter in overtime. Let's see how this fourth quarter treats them. Those front fans think it's going to be positive. From quick throw out complete to Nauta, who's had a good game. He had a 55 yarder. He had a touchdown catch on a perfectly thrown ball. And for him today, that's four catches for 81 yards and a touchdown. Yeah, that one against the Blitz really, you know, when they caught him in the Blitz, ran right by the safety. This Georgia offense is hitting on all cylinders. Both Georgia tight ends in there right now, Warner and Nauta. Second down and three with Holyfield behind Fromm. They give it on a sweep to Stanley and Stanley down the sideline and then Sertan almost a helmet to helmet there no flag Xavier McKinney that time misjudged the speed of Stanley he was right there he had the play stopped but Stanley ran right by him watch to the left side McKinney's there and then misjudges it just like Waddle did on the touchdown McKinney did not judge that jet sweep speed. Fans are booing, but Sertan got his shoulder in there on that hit to knock him out of bounds. But a 12-yard gain and a first down at the 46. From quick slant, batted down. And Jennings, I think, is the guy that batted it down. He hurt his hand doing it. Jennings did not play in the national championship game was all over the field in the Iron Bowl. Both he and Christian Miller had big games, but a little bit quiet in this game so far. He got it right in the fingers. Yes. So second down to 10. A group of three receivers for Fromm in tight on the right side. And now Nicole Hardman goes in motion the other way. Fromm rolls, throws late, and it's caught. By Ridley. <laughs> Coming into last year's game, Ryan Ridley had caught eight passes all year before the National Championship game, and he caught six for 82. That was impressive wow. right there. No kidding. Throw and catch. What concentration right in front of the coach. Now it makes the third down a little bit easier as they're into Alabama territory again at the 48. Third down at three. A third down at four, beg your pardon. Here comes a blitz. Fromm's going to loft it long jump ball. No, he didn't get it in the field of play. Simmons was the intended receiver, but there was just too much heat coming. Yeah. Wilson and Moses, 30 and 32, timed it out. Fromm had to give way and just kind of hope to find one. Watch the two inside linebackers. Crisscross, nobody blocks either one of them. And Fromm's lucky he didn't get a sack. So it's a punting situation for Jake Camarda. The last time he punted, he couldn't keep it in the field of play. That guy took his first one about 36 yards when he had it in the first quarter. He'd like to keep it away from him and keep it inside the 10 somewhere. Not quite. Not quite. Wow, that was close. Georgia with. Two guys down there, including Nicole Hardman, trying to save it from getting to the end zone. I think LeCount had the first try on it, but he's a defender. He's not used to those over-the-shoulder catches. <laughs> he did have an interception right about there earlier. Yep. Alabama's got it back. There's a touchdown difference between number one and number four. Don't go away. The SEC Championship on CBS, presented by Dr. Pepper, is sponsored by Garmin. Smile Direct Club, Chick-fil-A, and by Dr. Pepper. Hug a 10, 
Taking it in down at the goal line. Hoping his team can hold on to a touchdown lead. But guess who's got the ball back? Top ranked Alabama. The give is to Najee Harris and taken wide and knocked down for a loss. Tay Crowder was the first to meet him. Well, I'll tell you, Jawan Taylor, Natres Patrick, and Tay Crowder, the three inside linebackers, may, might not be Roquan Smith, but they've been good enough tonight making the plays, playing middle linebacker, inside linebacker, good enough to kind of throttle this Alabama offense. Monty Rice, one of the other linebackers, injured. Their number two tackler, so Crowder's the guy that's filling in for him and doing a good job. Second and 12. Play action, look one way, come back to the middle, complete across the 30, first down to Devontae Smith. Whoa. Really nice catch by Smith, running full speed across the field. He has to stop and adjust for the football and catch it with his hands. Watch the ball behind the receiver and catches it, almost catches it away from the defender that time, Eric Stokes. Pick up a 13. First down at the 31. 11 and a half to go in regulation. Josh Jacobs in motion. Time to the low line. Fires in and out of the hands of Ruggs. Had to go airborne to try to pull that down, and two is down again. Well, this time it looks like he's holding that right knee, doesn't he? I can't tell. Well, either can I, but I was guessing. I'd like to tell you the truth. <laughs> Jalen Hurts is starting to warm up. I didn't see the end of the play here until now. Oh, oh it looks like it's it his, gave his, his right. Looked like his right ankle. Oh, he, oh, he got, got hit stepped by his on. Own guy. Yes, by Williams. Got stepped on by Jonah Williams as he threw the ball. That's when you're most vulnerable. It's almost like the punter on his plant leg when you punt. When you're throwing the ball, all your weight is on that front foot and you get it stepped on, and that is painful. How ironic would this be? If Jalen Hurts has to come in to play quarterback? Yes. Well, he's expecting to. And the question was coming in here when we, you know, coming into this game, Tua had only thrown three fourth quarter passes because they've been so far ahead. Right. No one's given them a game. The question was all year, can you really win a championship without playing one close game? The answer is no. Tonight is the close game. Concern on the faces of the Alabama fans, obviously. And when you got one of the best players, if not the best player in football, I'm sure the Georgia fans are feeling the same way. And again, you see Jonah Williams stepping on that ankle, friendly fire, and that doesn't look good at all. He spent a lot of time in the tent in the first half, and he's going back to the tent, I can guarantee you. And that means Jalen Hurts, the guy who won all but two of the games that he started and was replaced at halftime of the national championship game on January 8th. Comes in to take over for the guy that won that game. And he had a brutal first half in the national championship game. He struggled in the Iron Bowl. He struggled against Clemson. He had a brutal first half. I think he was 0 for 3 if my memory serves me right. He was 3 out of 8 three. for the game. Did run for 47 yards though. And He's running the show right now. What do you call it? Do you call it kind of quarterback draw to get him in the feel of things? That's what he's good at. Second and 10 from the 31. Going to give it to Najee Harris, and Harris is swarmed under by the Georgia defense. Led by Jonathan Ledbetter, the guy Gary talked about a little bit earlier. Ledbetter said, I came back for this game. Inside, defeats the block, makes the play in the backfield. No movement at all that time by that offensive line. Jonah Williams was stalemated at the point of attack. Nowhere to go. It's third down and 12. And you got to think Jalen Hurts has got to throw it here. Three wide outs to the top of your screen. Jalen. Getting some pressure down the middle. He throws a strike to Irv Schmidt for the first down. Sometimes when you're a good teammate and a good guy, the world and the game finds 
you again. Remember how he stood there and cheered his teammate. He stayed when everybody thought he would transfer and put in one more year, and now his team needs him. Remember about three hours ago where I said sometimes in life you don't get a second chance? He's got one right here. Georgia Ten got, minutes to go. Georgia got one, and now he has one. And now he's running for his life. Throw is incomplete intended for Smith. DeAndre Baker was coming off the corner. And remember, he's not a 100% runner that we saw when he went 26-2 and two as a starter. He's still not there. Had ankle surgery. Is still not 100%. You see how his ankles are wrapped up. Both of them are taped up. Well, we had a couple of games where he thought we'd come in and see him in the second half, but he wasn't ready to go, so it was... Mac Jones, who took over for Tua. And now it's Jalen at the 10 minute mark. Damian Harris. Harris gets to the second level before Georgia can bring him down around the 47 yard line. Let's check in with an update on Tua. Here's Jamie. Brad, not looking good for Tua. I can see into the tent right now. His shoe and ankle tape and sock are completely off that right side, and they have just motioned for the cart to come out and get Tua. So he's still in there, but not looking good for him. Oh, man. Well, think about it. As a freshman, Jalen Hurts in the old offense led his team in the playoffs two times, freshman and sophomore year. Didn't finish it off, but one time he was out there. When he left the field, he had the lead against Clemson. Third and five for him here. Georgia brings the extra man. Hurts trying to run away from the heat. Lofts one on the sideline. Is it caught by Waddle? Yes. What a story. The whole offseason. As Tyler Clark, number 52, puts the pressure right up the middle. Kalen gets, Kalen gets away. Remember SEC Media Days, Brad? We were asked the question a hundred times. <laughs> Will Jalen Hurst stay at Alabama? He's in there right now trying to draw even with Georgia. That pick up to Waddle was good for 23. And then Judy on that one. Under nine to go. And there's the cart Jamie was talking about, which will take Tua Tagovailoa to the Alabama locker room. Pump fake by Hertz. Wants to come back the other way. He's going to run for it now, and he's got enough speed to get that much. Very close to the first down. I'm not quite sure where his okay. foot went out. I'm pretty sure he's not 100%, but I think he's 99%. <laughs> <laughs> Holy cow. What a story unfolding here. Walter Grant couldn't catch him, and he got the first down. The Heisman Trophy candidate goes out, and in the year of the transfer quarterback, this guy stayed. And he's got his team in the red zone. Damian Harris up the middle. Harris for nine more. Inside the 10. As did Damian Harris. Remember, he came back. Everyone thought he was going to turn pro. The offensive line carves it out, and Damian Harris picks his way through for a big nine-yard game. Second down, a long one. A 71-yard drive in four and a half minutes so far. Hurts is going to keep it. And he's not yet. Not going to get there. Not quite. Eric Stokes stood him up and kept him from getting that first down. And we're under eight minutes. Good job by Stokes playing off the rugs block and putting his shoulder in there and lifting. Nick Saban is thinking right now and probably telling offensive coordinator Mike Loxley, you got two tries for the first down. Alabama's going to have two backs in there right now. Nick is getting down the sideline to be prepared to take a timeout. He anticipated it. And now it's direct snap to Josh Jacobs, and Jacobs has got the first down. So they have a running quarterback in there, Hurts. They put Damian Harris out of the slot, and they just snapped it to number eight. Well, Josh Jacobs, his high school career is doing what he did right there. He was a Wildcat quarterback in high school. Just a three-star recruit, but that's the offense he ran. First and goal, Alabama. And I think 
Jonah Williams had to leave the field because his helmet came off. Matt Womack, a starter in last year's game, goes over to left tackle. He started at right tackle in the national championship game. At the seven, Henches the tight end in motion. Jalen Hurts, quarterback draw all the way. Got to the five. Yeah, well stopped by Georgia. A little bit more like quarterback power. It was a design run, pulling the guard. That was a power play, single wing football, basically. 15th play of this drive coming up. And boy, does that chip shot field goal loom large now. Boy, is that right. Guy that's been almost automatic, Rodrigo Blankenship missed just outside 30 yards a little while ago. And Jonah Williams is back in the game. Got that helmet back on. Second and goal, just inside the five. Damian Harris kind of leaned in, flags down, false start, I think, Alabama. False start on the offense, number 66. Five-yard penalty remains, second down. On Lester Cotton. See, that changes the dimension now. Now Alabama has to think throwing, and that's not to us, excuse me, Jalen's number one play. Jalen is run first. The clock ticks under six minutes in regulation. Second down to goal. Nice to have a backup quarterback who was the SEC player of the year and 26 and two as a starter. From the 10. And again, whistle stops play. First charge timeout, Georgia. Georgia takes a timeout. We're going to take it with them with 5.36 to go. They're here, 28-21, 5.36 to play in regulation. Jalen Hurts, if you're just joining us, in for the injured to attack below us. A second down and goal coming up at the Georgia 10-yard line as the dogs have just used one of their timeouts. Boy, looking at the clock right here now for Alabama, can you even dare try a field goal? I think you got to think touchdown unless it's such long yardage. You're forced to it. You got to be thinking three more downs to score. Jalen's used Irv Smith a couple of times since he's come in. As a receiver, Blitz is coming. Hurts throws to the corner. Incomplete intended for Devontae Smith. The coverage play. was Eric Stokes. Devontae Smith thought it was a run. He was blocking downfield. Another mental mistake for Alabama. This is after a timeout. Watch what Devontae Smith is doing. He was, I don't know what he was doing on that play. He came inside, he went outside, and it looked like he basically quit on the route. Alabama's three out of three on the third down conversions this drive. They've got third and goal from the 10. Judy in motion. Hurts. Sets his feet, now starts to use his feet. Throws on the run. Touchdown, Judy! What a play. An extra point away from a tie game. story Jalen Hurts coming in to get this tie member a guy who was taken out because he could not throw engineers that drive Bullivis an all-important extra point up and good 519 remaining in regulation play in Atlanta and Judy broke his route on the play. Watch Judy. He kind of goes this way, this way, and then back at the end of the thing. Comes out, comes in, and then pointed, and then runs back out for the play. And Jalen Hurts puts it right there. 80 yards and 16 plays. Jalen Hurts, a remarkable story. It's tied at 28. So there on the sideline, 
One of the reasons Nick Saban brought in Dan Enos was to tempt Jalen Hurts to stay and work with Danny, who's a great quarterback coach. And Jalen Hurts looked at it and said, you know what, I think I can get better here and become a better passer all year. Every time we met with Coach Saban, he has said, Jalen has improved. Well, look, this high kickoff again. Georgia's going to call a fair catch on this one. And because of the fair catch, it's scooped up by Herrien. And let's see. I think it's going to go back it to, has the to, go 25. Back to the 25. Yes. Doesn't it? Yeah, I think so. Because the kind of called the fair catch dropped it. I'm not sure. It was Miko Hardman who called the fair catch and then had it go right through his hands. And then Brian Herrien, who's the other deep back, picked it up. Here's the call. During the play, there was a fair catch signal given. It was recovered at this spot will be first and 10 Georgia. So the rule is where you call the fair catch. If you muff it the ball goes back to where you muffed it. So they're going to. No it's going to be where Harry got, got it right, right there. there it's 24. Yard line. 24. It. So Georgia's got it 514 to go tie game 514 in regulation. Justin Fields is in at quarterback. Trying to spin away from Raquan Davis. No, it was Bugs. And we got a yard. Does that surprise you a little bit? Uh, totally. Yeah, I, I have to say, I mean, you know, with the way that the game is going, last year in the national championship game, Georgia got bogged on on offense, only got two first downs in the fourth quarter in overtime. Right now they're at one. Kirby Smart is looking out there and say, we've got to open it up. We cannot close down this offense. Hardman in motion across the field. Blitz coming from Alabama. Fromm trying to loft one to Swift, and he got it to him. And Swift down the sideline. Cuts back to the 50. There's no harder throw than that one right there. Throwing a touch pass over the shoulder to a running back. Just lay it over the defensive end, and Swift gets it and makes the play. Jake Fromm, I don't know if I've seen a better quarterback game than Fromm has played in this championship. There's his numbers. Swift, a 26-yard catch and run. And they're in Alabama territory. The dogs at the 49. Two tight ends set in there for Georgia right now. From under center. Elijah Holyfield dropped for a loss. Quentin Williams still a game record with four minutes remaining in the game. This time he started out to his left and then redirected and made the play. Watch him jump left around the guard, gets through the tackle, and then makes the play. What a play. The ball is right at midfield. Second down and 11. From in the gun. Loads it. Fires sideline too far. Riley Ridley, the intended receiver, and it's third and 11. That's won six national championships, and on the other sideline, the guy that worked with him for 11 years. And Georgia is 0 for 4 in their last four third down conversions. The Bama defense has stepped up on third down. Georgia needs to get to the Alabama 39. From looking left the whole way, throws. Broken up. The question was, when the pressure got on this Alabama team, could they react like the great championship teams of past when Alabama has won the fourth quarter? Shaheem Carter has reacted. Boy, what a play. And had Hardman been able to hold that, he got a foot down. It would have been a first down. Instead, 
It's the foot of Jake Camarda. And it's a fake. Justin Fields. Oh my gosh. It was fourth and 11. Alabama's going to take over at the 48 yard line. The Alabama bench knew it was coming. They kept their defense out there. They're playing defense safe. Justin Fields is right here. They were ready for it. They played defense safe, and they had no chance on the first down. A risk, wow. to say the least. Alabama's offense at the 48. I don't know if it was Fields or Bray Cox. Both of them have number one. I'm not sure to tell you the truth. Now it's in Jalen Hurts' hands again. Damian Harris trying to get to the 50. Got about a yard, and that's it. The last drive, Jalen Hurts was sensational. That was third and 13 when he hit Irv Smith. This one getting out of the pocket that could have been a sack. He finds Waddle. And then third and 10 near the goal line. The whole Alabama bench was yelling for Jalen to run. And he threw for the touch. Set to throw here too if he can get it away. Georgia coming after him. He breaks away. He's still running. Almost dropped the ball, but he crossed midfield before Crowder brought him down. Holy cow. I don't know how he escaped in the first place, and then I don't know how he held out of the ball. At all. Crowder, I thought, was going to strip it easily that time. That's when they happened from behind, just like that. Two minutes remaining in regulation. It's third and seven. To attack of Aloha, waved off the cart. He's out of the tent. He's on the sideline. But it's number two right now that's running the Alabama engine. Third and seven. Hurts throws down the middle, and he's got it to Irv Smith, who dropped the ball but covered it. That's the third time Alabama has recovered a fumble, their own fumble, in this game. But how about the poise of Jalen Hurts? Good pocket, good protection, and a perfect throw. I, I don't know if I've ever seen anything like this before. The guy who was vanquished to the bench a year ago, playing behind the Heisman candidate, comes off the bench to give him a chance. Pick up a 19 to the 31. Jalen Hurts looking for more. Going to the far sideline. He's got Waddle again. throw gets to the right guy with an excellent pass in the national championship game Alabama played for the field goal to win the game they actually brought in Jalen to run the last play as a quarterback sneak will they do that again I don't think so first down remember they missed it and went to overtime just inside the 16 quarterback draw Jalen Hurts Jalen. I like both teams fans are in shock. Bolivis extra point is good. With a minute and four seconds remaining in the ball game, Alabama leads by a touchdown. It was a called quarterback draw. Similar to the play when he scored against Clemson when he left the field with the lead. Although Deshaun Watson brought him back. Now it's going to be Jake Fromm. Tua says, what a drive. Tagovailoa and Hurts with the hug on the sideline as Jalen went 15 yards to cap a 52-yard drive in five plays. You talk about a two-minute drill. That's how many minutes it took him to take the lead for the first time. 
Nicole Hardman from the goal line. He's electric if you can get him some room. Nico Hardman, far sideline, nice return. Well, the decision by Kirby Smart to fake the punt. Justin Fields in there, gives the great field position to Alabama. Remember, it was fourth and 11. And then the quarterback draw, so reminiscent of the last time Jalen Hurts played in the national championship game when he did the same. Remember, the only regular season loss for Georgia, they tried a fake field goal against LSU. They That's lost right. the game. That's right. Plenty of time. 57 seconds, but two timeouts. Jake Fromm starts the Georgia offense from the 36. They need a touchdown to tie. Fromm hit as he throws. Incomplete. Anthony Jennings again. Coming from the side. Oh, did that, was that a ball loose? Was that a... Yes, this could be overturned. This could be overturned. That could be a fumble. The ball was not controlled in his hand. This should be reviewed. His hand was going forward, but did he have control of it? The ruling on the field was an incomplete forward pass. The previous play is under further review. It'll be an all-important review, that's for sure. He pushes the ball forward, but does he have control? Boy, I think this is going to be tough. Is there enough to overturn it? Here's the look. He's hit in the face mask and the ball, I, his arms I, coming forward. I think he still has the ball in his hand. It is so close, though. It's going to be up to the replay official. Was it dislodged and a fumble? Has it? Has it? After review, the ruling on the field stands. So Georgia Just still that, has life. The last two fingers on the ball saved it. Second and 10. Georgia at its own 36-yard line. 51 seconds remaining. Down a touchdown. Two timeouts remaining. Flats to DeAndre Swift. See if he can make something happen. He got eight yards and out of bounds. And it's going to be third down and two. Well, barring a turnover now, you know no matter what, we're going to get a throw to the end zone, right? I mean, at the end of the game. There's going to be a Hail Mary. Fromm can throw the ball 55, 60 yards. Right now, they just want to pick up two. Although, they're going to need... They'll use two downs to do it, that's yes. for sure. And if they don't get it here, they'll call a timeout. Jake Fromm looks left the whole time. Throws way out of bounds to Godwin. Fourth down. Nobody open. Alabama brings just four players. Carter again in great coverage. Making the plays, taking the right angles. Shaheen Carter is having a wonderful game back there. Number five, the quarterback of that secondary in their nickel package. This play is the football game. If Georgia converts, they've still got a chance. If they don't, Alabama will still be perfect and still be number one. Godwin in motion. From deep drop. Waits, fires on a crossing route to Godwin. He got the first down. It was a good guess by Jim Chaney, offensive coordinator. Man-to-man -man coverage, you crisscross your receivers, you get a little rub pick, and just enough for the first down. At the 48-yard line, now the clock starts. From back to throw. Out in the flat to Swift. Needs to get out of bounds, but get what he can. 
Matt Wilson is really the center fielder in this defense. The middle linebacker is almost 25 yards deep. Three-man rush, he goes deep and plays in between the two safeties. Still two timeouts for Georgia, but the clock is their enemy. 23 seconds remaining. Five receiver group for Fromm, empty backfield. Watch him go deep. He's not going to get it going anywhere. Timeout, good timeout by Kirby Smart. LeBron Ray with a sack. Middle linebacker gets deep, deep zone by Alabama. Three-man rush, and they get to him. 18 seconds, one timeout left. The Georgia fans shocked as they had a two-touchdown lead at 28-14. Jalen Hurts replaces Tua Tagovailoa, leads Alabama to the seven-point lead they have. And now we're down to a couple of plays. There were so many people that talked about so many possibilities, and a lot of people said, what if Jalen Hurts gets in there and does it the same way that Tua did it a year ago? And it proved to be one of the factors of the game. The third down doesn't matter too much. The scoreboard does. Like to get it a little bit deeper in Alabama territory just to give Jake Fromm that throw that Gary talked about if it comes down to one last heave to the end zone. Fromm spins the ball back there and he's going deep right now. Double coverage broken up at the goal line. Ridley the intended receiver. And that means now they're down to one throw. Ridley went up, had his hands on it. It would have been an incredible catch had he been able to hold on. And Jared Maiden, number 21, who was suspended in the first half of the game, is one of the men. Say on Smith, four and 21 Maiden are back there. This has been some kind of football game. It comes down to this. Might have time still to throw an eight yard out and get a little closer and have one second left. From throws, gonna have to hurry, not gonna get out of bounds. First down, but there's three seconds left. They have time to take a timeout now and then throw to the end zone. January 8th, a game that went to overtime and Somewhat unknown quarterback. He was known to Gary and I because we saw him in practice and in several games during the season. Came in to lead and throw a touchdown pass to win in OT. And now the guy whose place he took is three seconds away from bringing Alabama back to an unbelievable win. I don't know if Tua is going to win the Heisman, but I do know Jalen Hurts will be a legend in Alabama football forever after this. Game. Well said. Jake Fromm has thrown for 303 yards and three touchdowns. Right now, he's going to throw from 39 yards out. Deeper than that, actually, by the time he drops back. And if he can get a pass away, it will be to the end zone. Georgia fans hoping for a prayer. It'll be a three-man rush. And it'll be Terry Godwin to the left. Riley Ridley. And all Holloman, the way, And Hardman to the right. And all the way back is Mac Wilson. He's the last player, the last defender, the middle linebacker. And the last play of the game. Fromm's in trouble. Can he even get a pass away? Loads. Goes to the end zone. Jump ball. Incomplete. And Alabama has won it.
2018 SEC champions come from Tuscaloosa. And two old friends embrace out at midfield after a battle that lasted and lasted and almost went to overtime a second time. Another heartbreaking setback for Georgia. Jubilation on the Alabama sideline once again. The winning coach is with Jamie. Coach, what words do you have about Jalen Hurts and what he just did for your team right now? Well, we've always had a lot of faith in Jalen. And, you know, I told him when we put him in, when Tua got hurt, it's your time. And he certainly took advantage of it and did a fantastic job. I'm, I'm so proud of this guy for what he's done this year. I can't even tell you. Great comeback for our team. So tremendous amount of resiliency, you know, in the game. Uh, we didn't play great, but we won the SEC today, and we're so happy about that. After he goes in, what else sparks that turnaround for Jalen and this offense? Well, you know, we got a couple stops on defense. We were struggling, right? and, you know, the offense just kept going out there and playing, and we made some plays and we know we could make them. We just had to make them, and we did. When you saw your team play the way they did in the first half, did you know exactly what needed to be done to, take, to pull this one off tonight? Yeah, we, we, we had to make some adjustments on a couple formations they had us a little messed up on, and we got the players straight on that and played a little better in the second half. All right, I'm going to talk to this young man right here. Coach, thank you. Jalen, when you see Tua go down a couple times tonight, but for the final time, what did that moment feel like for you when you went back under center? Um... I honestly didn't know what to think, you know. All year I kind of been waiting on my opportunity. Um, and it, it, regardless of how it went, you know, my opportunity came today and I worked hard really week this week with my teammates and uh, we found a way to get it done today. You put that drive together on the winning touchdown. What had the game unfolded and looked like to you on the sideline that made you know that you could pull this one off? Well, I know at, at Alabama there's always an opportunity to win. We worked so hard in the offseason, you know, blood, sweat, and tears together. And um, today, you know, we found a way to get it done. I'm so happy. Happy for everybody. Congratulations, Jalen. Thank you. I'm not sure I've ever seen Nick Saban emotional. He got choked up talking about the uh, number two. How could he not? A guy that stayed an extra year when all of us experts thought that he would look for another place to land and show his talent somewhere else. He stuck it out. He proved that he could, we all knew he could play. He was the SEC Player of the Year two years ago. What a combination. Tua didn't have his great game, but his backup came through. A look at the final play, by the way. Jake Fromm gave his receivers a chance. And there's Mac Wilson, the middle linebacker, the guy they put at the back end to make the play. Number 30 is right in the middle of it, <laughs> along with a few other guys, by the way. <laughs> what a fantastic football game. Another SEC title for Nick Saban. And Jalen Hurts, the man that engineered 21 straight unanswered points by the Tide, including the game winner on a 15-yard run. So much to think about. I think about the missed field goal. The Jalen Hurts heroics and the fake punt. The decisions right there at the end that gave Alabama the field position to go down. Now it's time for the play of the game. Presented by Napa Auto Parts. And here it was. Two minutes covered, 52 yards. The final 15 by number two, Jalen Hurts. That was the game winner. And here's how Eli Gold called it on the Tide Radio Network. A minute 11 to go in regulation. Tied at 28. First and 10, Alabama. From the Georgia 15 inside the Chick-fil-A red zone. Jalen calls his own number. He runs to the 10. He's running to the 5. He is to the goal line. He is in. Touchdown! Jalen Hurts! Touchdown, Alabama, to take the lead with a minute 4 remaining in the ball game. And Hurts hurts the hearts of the Georgia Bulldogs and their fans one more time. What a finish. Coming up after our game, stay tuned. CBS Sports College football postgame show presented by Capital One. Zook and the guys will be over in the end zone to our right to recap this one. Postgame show is coming up.
after this break. What a game. Final score, Alabama 35, Georgia 28. The Tide, a perfect 13-0 with more to come.